And here we are, start of the series. We've got Viper in the blue playing as the Berbers. We have Hera in the red playing as the Bohemians. The map is fortified clearing. And buckle up, folks, because it's a best of nine. Ooh, yo, yo, yo. It could take us quite some time here until someone wins five maps. We've just seen a bang of a set, four and a half hours in the making. Hera there. Probably with a slight advantage, we would think, right? He likes to play the long sessions. He is in favor of best of nines. In one discussion, even wanted to have the finals best of 11. Yep. Viper, really happy with the best of five, best of seven format. Best of nine will be very interesting to see. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, right? You just, you look at how Hera's age compared to some of the others here, mm -hmm. and uh, that's absolutely been a factor. Uh, and at NAC, especially when the first series can be so long, the start time can always be a factor as well. I sat next to both of these players for a period in like game number two or three and they were both discussing like how long is this series going to go because yo would never die <laughs> and so they were both kind of alluding to the fact well we might be playing pretty late but man did the civilizations here i have to say berbers was not on my list for a closed map civilization here for Viper. Yeah, typically we try to go for civilizations that have strong eco advantages, right? We are starting with stone walls in one direction, the rush distance on the outside really long, and therefore something with Malay, with Bengalis, where we have more villagers, uh, really likely picks, something with strong monks, Berbers, neither of those advantages really. Yeah, so I mean, you could see it's suiting Viper in some ways because he'll love his mobility, and you can use that on this map with utilizing the sides. Hera already walling up here, most likely going to be a fast castle for him. Uh, Viper's been going for quite a few fast castles himself here, but maybe a Feudal Age build could be an option. But to me, Civ-wise, Hera Civilization is way better if he can get to Halb Hufnitsa, and you can see the Hufnitsa on the right. Even the Hussite wagons actually could be really good against the Berbers. It's uh, just that late game for the Bohemians, so, so strong. So many bonuses that flow together nicely for closed maps. I think this is going to be the first time. Actually, Stack Guy can get to work. I would go as far as to say this is the first time Berbers has been played on Arena or Fortified Clearing, not just in the main event, but also the qualifier. Ooh. That's that's just a. I'm, I'm going out on the limb here, but. No, not unreasonable, not unreasonable. While well, we see a $50 donation flying in, thank you so much. And Bohemians, well, I think this will be really interesting. One of the main advantages is getting chemistry in Carthage, therefore we could see hand cannoneers, we could see maybe some early aggression, and therefore getting to those bombard cannons a bit earlier. Viper plays pop 20, and only has 50 gold. This could be a bit of a delayed loom. Interesting approach here. Yeah, so Viper going feudal age, which you can do on this map. Hera isn't walled yet, but Hera's kept his scout at home. It's kind of funny, Hera's left a hole there. So I think Hera will know now, and just double checking that, we'll send out a villager. Harris playing it safe. He knows that if Viper were to go Feudal Age, that one scout would kill the bill. But if he's got two bills nearby the walls and his starting scout as well, he should be just fine. And Viper really has no choice here. I think if Viper were to get, dive in there, he'd regret it because Hera could just leave him in there and run through the middle. So Viper going to hit Feudal. This is just for a bit of a mini boom, <laughs> I guess, for farms and adapting for Viper. And Viper canceled loom behind his uptiming there therefore both eco upgrades will have more food on his farms it just makes it so much easier because well you have the scout advantage so the opponent can't really scout on the outside the opponent has to build all those walls viper will be a bit later to castle age but will have a bit more map vision and if the opponent was to rush you already off your age and can defend way easier yeah, now if you look to the middle, some of those relics are a little bit closer to Viper, which definitely could benefit him. Mm -hmm. Like three of the five seem to be close to his walls and his gates. But there are uh, nine relics on this map, so I don't think one relic being slightly closer to Viper is really going to make or break the game. And again, we like Bohemians in the late stages. So uh, if that's the case, can you just straight boom here if you're Hera? Or do you, do you have to compete for the relics in some way? Thing is, you kind of have to think, okay... If we go into a stable 40-minute game, Bohemians is always winning, right? That's what we are assuming. Going for Habadiers, going for Hofnitze. Berbers on the other side, they need to then put on the pressure. Yeah. So how can you die? It is to late castle age aggression. It is to early imp aggression. So I think Hera needs to build army just to get a good idea of what's coming as well. Okay, okay, yeah, we'll see. Hera is going to go <coughs> market blacksmith. Uh, stats guys reporting... And yeah, Berbers have not been played on any of those maps. Now, if you might be wondering why, like, why, why then? Why would Viper 
the all-knowing Viper do this? Well, it's because of the random bans, but also it's a best of nine now. And in all those previous sets in, in NAC and also in the qualifier, they never went up to a best of nine, mm -hmm. which means they didn't really have to stretch their uh, their limits in terms of the draft. So uh, Viper might have also been looking for a certain matchup. Uh, we could maybe talk about that when we look back to the draft in between games, but maybe Viper was hoping to get Berbers against another civilization out there. But uh, again, things to speculate on in the future. Hera on the way to Castle Age. Viper won't be up too far behind him here. And Viper, he might play towards a stable here, Nilly. I'm trying to get a look at his That's base not here. That's unreasonable, right? Cheaper knight there, and obviously cheaper light cap, something we forget quite often while we see him. Oh, it's something we didn't even spot yet. Yeah, so he knows where the gold is. And this is Viper's point of view. And Viper is making a stable around the side. And that is not something Hera is going to be able to spot easily. I'd love to see Hera scouting right now, see what he's up to. Hera might be thinking like we're thinking. He's like, get me those relics. Only the middle. Let's think about the late game, and he is scouting the middle. And look how heavily he's on gold, right? That might be double, maybe even triple monastery already. is thinking about the villagers, which he wants to pick. Ooh, that's going to be interesting, and he will be extremely clueless. Yeah, interesting. So double monastery in the middle... With some Siege to back it up could be incredibly strong, especially if Viper doesn't have scout production in the middle. Mm -hmm. But then if you get pushed on the outside, it could be problematic. Now Hera's going to add a barracks here. So this is probably for a few spearmen to protect any villagers and to protect any monks in the middle. But again, that villager, she's just walking along the edge of the map here, and that's probably for a forward siege workshop from Viper. Oh, and that's something that we very rarely see. The Viper clicks to Castle Age and adds a market behind it. Yeah. What is th that implying? That he's selling stone? Is this a guaranteed all-in now? No, I think I think this isn't necessarily for selling stone, but this is going to be a build that Viper's not accustomed to in full. So you kind of use that market to help you when you need it, right? Like buying the food, selling some, some wood. But yeah, that you're definitely right. The market's normally part of the plan. Hera's plan is the second TC. And Hera, just one monastery. The second one could come up here. Very likely. Sold the stone earlier, so he will play the maximum of two TCs for now. Yep. Second Monastery, quite nice. Now the question, is it the Siege work uh, Workshop follow-up? Another stable from Viper. That's also pretty interesting, right? He's producing scouts, so that means Viper. He's going to get pushed in the middle. This could be a legendary game. I think if the going gets rough for either of them, you have to recognize where you can run here, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if Hera pushes into Viper's base, Viper has to recognize that he can run to other golds outside of his base. He doesn't have to be that stubborn. And on the flip side, if Hera gets pushed on the back side of his base, he can actually go to the middle where he has gold right beyond his stone walls. Corner check. I think the one at the bottom, it's gold, stone, and some deer together, right? Look at that. That's a beautiful... Way to expand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And But this is in the moment when you get hit with pressure you do not expect. Very rarely do we see both players not expect what their opponent is going for. Mm -hmm. Viper is in the dark. Hera is in the dark. And that Siege Workshop is going up. Now, do you go for a Mangonel so you can hit the villagers on the gold? Or do you go for a Ram so you can break through some of these buildings a little bit faster? Typical opening is first the Mangonel to make sure the opponent can't rewall into the Ram because it does more damage against the building. Yeah, okay, we'll see. Now, it is awfully quiet if you are both of them. And you are right, it is knights. Now, I thought maybe it'd be scouts because you're expecting monks, but scouts don't kill villagers that quickly. Mm -hmm. Knights are going <gasps> to do that. What's and the here? scout comes in for Hera. Oh, and he gets the full idea. He won't see the stable. That's absolute disaster. That's disaster for the Viper. Well, is it or isn't it? This could also just confuse Hera even more. Like, what's Hera going to do? Suddenly leave the middle to go scout the outside? Yeah, why not? And Viper, um, Hera's going to see scouts, so oh. this is normal. Hera's like, okay, he's going scouts. This is what we might expect. A Hera scout could leave if he wishes to. Viper might want him to, and Hera does leave. So this, so far from what Hera is seeing, is not that far from the ordinary. Now well, the knights are shown here. Mangonel around can get a shot off against those villagers. Not sure if Hera even has loom here. Yeah, Hera probably doesn't have loom. He does have loom, excuse me. We're going to see that shot, though. That, I like this from Viper, right? Because... Hera's got so many other things to worry about. Great reaction, though, from Hera. And now he knows Viper's got buildings back there because of the knights and now because of the siege. Okay, monks are going back. Wouldn't be surprised if he tries to click Redemption next. 475 gold, you can see it. And he will click that one pretty quickly. But the Palisade wall is about to f fall here already. Now, you cannot lose a knight to a conversion here. This is what makes these pushes so difficult from someone in Viper's position. Because if you lose that knight, 
you are then going to lose your Mangonel most likely yeah. to the Knight. So it's extremely difficult for someone like Viper even to do damage with this. If Hera has the monks around and Hera sees that one Knight, Viper might want to delete that one. He does run in with the scout there to get the kill, but the scout now goes down and the monk is now out and there's multiple actually. And if the conversions come in, Viper's push will die and it's two conversions, which is amazing for Hera. Mangonel dies, second one in danger as well. That is absolutely brilliant here for our Canadian, and that makes it so tricky. Typically with this push, you want to have your own monks there to convert those knights back, but Viper, two, thi two th sin there. Yeah, yeah. On me. Absolutely. Now, some weak knights are there, so Viper, if he recognizes that, could kill those knights. He still has the villager back there. He is dropping a second TC, and Hera's not exactly pressuring Viper's main base but Hera has five relics in the middle. I think Viper looked at this matchup from the start and said, oof, this is not what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I have to do something messy. And I mean, he's brought the messiness to Hera, don't get me wrong, but Hera's in a pretty good position. Eco lead, five relics. And uh, I'm struggling to see what Viper can really do at this current time to, to break Hera. Tristan, let's think this one through. If you knew that your opponent was to attack you with knights, and Mangonauts. What is the perfect answer to it? Exactly what Hera has. <laughs> Monks and pikemen, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> and that's what he w went for, basically blind. Viper played into the cards of Hera here. Yeah. yeah, it was just the positioning of it, I think, that was really the big deal. Viper does as a, add his own monastery now, but to your point, Nilly, I don't think it's ever really that comfortable with Berbers. Their monks are so weak to add that at the start, but Viper, he's gonna clear out the monks here, not bad. He has lost a lot of his siege, but great value actually, as he kills the monks and will still be able to pressure Hera from this side. Okay, next Mangonel in the queue, walls behind it. Let's see, two monks are coming over, but those five relics, they are generating relentlessly. Yeah, and then Viper has no real way to defend his base if Hera gets a push going. But I suppose if you get a castle up at home, that could be pretty good, Viper saving up for that, Hera. Has to be careful, he loses a knight to a conversion. Viper's knight switches back over. Oh. Hera also has the stone for a castle, though. Oh, where do you build it? How aggressively are you going? I mean, I would say build it on Viper's base, but also Hera's completely in the dark on that right now. Building in Viper's base might be a good way to finish, but it might be an even better way to throw the game. I think Hera should know how far ahead he is. Could build it at home, he goes your way, goes aggressively. Yeah, and it's, it's so easy for players to think what, what you said, let's not throw this position, I have the lead and go for the safe castle. But this is excellent awareness from Hera on the situation that his best way to make it so Viper can't pressure him as much is to attack him here and Viper has absolutely nothing there. Viper I don't even think knows that castle's coming up. So Hera will get a castle up that could pressure Viper's walls. And yeah, Viper was going to need to go for a defensive castle once he sees that. And look at the resources. Defensive castle would mean Viper would like to try to go into a trap war. But that is impossible against Bohemians if they're up so much earlier. Now, Archie Rangers being dropped could even be a chemistry follow-up behind this. But most likely, Hera will go him first. Yeah, Viper's still pressuring though. Hera has to leave the back of his base where his gold is. Which is not the greatest feeling. Uh -oh. Viper wants to leave his base to drop a castle in the same spot that Hera is. And he is just one step behind. So now he needs to drop a castle. But if you do that, That's that bad. means that it will get trapped down. Hera's build is perfect here. Absolutely. Crazy counter there. And over a thousand gold already generated. Scouts are coming in. Still couldn't afford the light cap. And the base is so tight. This is so easy to defend with if you're Hera. Yep. This is amazing for Hera. Hera just needs to ensure that he doesn't take big losses. Bohemians getting the second. Uh, sorry, the first and second gold mining upgrade for free when they arrive to each age. So Hera's gold mining's been insane on top of those relics. Hera's collected 1,500 more resources. Hera had the town centers faster. Hera will be an imp faster. Viper, I think, is going to try and do the same. I think Viper knows what type of game this is. It's common when it's castle v. castle for players to idle their TCs, but Viper's still so far from clicking up here. And even then, right, let's imagine we get chemistry in there. Like, the trapper won't be pretty if Bombard Cannons are joining the party as well. Luckily, the castles are close enough together, but it doesn't even matter, right? The, we, we're 100 seconds away for Hera, and Viper, he didn't cling, even click up yet, and it's even possible that Hera drops a second castle next to it. Absolutely. We have seen Hera use every bonus of the Bohemians, and he knew, like, and most maps have been like this, where you focus on the economy first. Viper truly went for something out of the box here, and actually very untypical for him. He is normally the player who plays the eco side of things. He is normally more the defender, 
But I think, again, he, he saw the matchup, knew how difficult it was going to be, and tried something different. And Hera, uh, he's been up against quite a few all-ins over the years. He's experienced a lot, which is now combined with his skills, why he's doing so well. And I think he, he's dealt with everything perfectly here. Yeah, and now we will see what Viper's mindset is going to be. In 25 seconds, Hera will reach in pill age. Is the goal to like continue playing a bit, get into the set a bit more, or will it be okay? Let's nerd it out a bit. Let's play a bit, get warm, get a bit feeling. How are you reacting to my pressure? I think Viper, he's more of the guy, okay, let's not try to squeeze half a percent of winning chances. Yeah, Viper says, I'm completely dead here, and the game ends, and a great start here for Hera. And honestly, listen, I, I think for that, for the start there, if you're a Viper fan, you're not going to be happy to see what you just saw. But again, it's a matchup thing, and in best of nines, you are expecting that you will have some rough matchups. Viper tried to fight against that bad matchup there, and Hera was able to defend from it. Oh, and look at that, all the boys there sitting, enjoying Donny. And yeah, obviously that was a bit of an underwhelming game. If you are a Viper fan, if you're an Hera fan, you have to be extremely happy. Everything worked perfectly. He was never really in any danger. I think I want to see the draft again. I wouldn't be surprised if this was like pick two against pick eight or something. I think where it could potentially hurt Viper is if he doesn't have a great Copenhagen civilization because the Berbers have looked really good on Copenhagen. So it would hurt. Three against nine. Yep. I will allow it. <laughs> this is okay. Yeah. This is okay. Well, though, and th this is how it should work, right? With yeah. with the way civilizations are balanced and with these drafts, this is this is something that you would even see as expected potentially. Hera's going to think the same. Like Burmese, maybe a later risky mo pick. Uh, though I do think Burmese have their place in certain games, but again, it does come down to the matchup. And we're going to see Viper pick the next map yet. He's got Canberra, Shoals, Arena, Copenhagen. So he's got more maps that incorporate stone walls. Mm -hmm. A very quick game to start off our series here. Yeah, and if you're a Hera fan. This is exactly as you would have expected it, right? One of the early picks, one of the things that you thought, okay, this is something I prioritize heavily. And then against a very low priority pick there by the Viper, this was a must-win scenario for Hera, and everything just went very, very smooth for him. Good, good start to what could be a really long set. Yeah, so Viper went 2-0 down against Doubt yesterday, mm -hmm. and then he had to really pick it up a notch. Doubt played incredibly well. Doubt's strategy was really solid. Viper said in the interview, no, I didn't hear everything he said, but apparently he was very clear that he felt that was one of the worst sets that he had performance-wise in a long time. Mm -hmm. He was very critical of himself. So, you know, I, I didn't really see that. What I saw was Doubt raised his level. Viper was maybe a step or two below, but or, or Viper was, but um, you know, I think Doubt deserves incredible credit for what he did yesterday. But, you know, it is a question of, you know, which Viper are you going to see on the day? I think back in his like prime, back when he was winning everything, it was like, okay, Viper's going to show up, he's going to win, and that's that's kind of the end of it. But there can be some dips in form from time to time. Hera, probably the player who is the most consistent in our scene, and he's also the, like arguably the best player right now. So it's like it's really cool how to see how Hera delivers every single time. He makes it look so easy. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy how dominant he has been over the last two years. Dominant, I think he won now three or four, I think he won four S-tier tournaments in a row. In, in a row, yep. We've never seen that before, but small fun fact, it is the first S-tier tournament that he plays where he's the defending champion. Ooh, that is an interesting little stat. All the other S-tier tournaments were kind of one-offs. They were separate, yep, yep, yep. And then we didn't have follow-up tournaments. Yeah, I mean, it was, what, uh, last March we had NAC? So mm -hmm. I think it's been the last 12 months for me is where Hera's really elevated his level, mm -hmm. where, you know, if there's even a question of his level before, you had to just respect the man for what he's been able to do. So we've got Viper playing as the Byzantines here on Shoals, his home map choice. We've got Hera as the Armenians, and we've seen lots of Byzantines on Shoals. Uh, we have not seen the Armenians here, so I'm excited to see how this one plays out. Yeah, and we can obviously do some nilly math there. Why do we have Armenians? Well, it is a map where we will go on lots and lots of wood. And look at that. Mule cart technologies are 40% more efficient. And we think, okay, this is likely going to Castle Age. After two wood upgrades, we have 40% plus for every generic civilization. But Armenians at plus 56% there, and that's some um, 60% points that you would love to have in your bank. Yeah, and then Byzantines on the flip side of things here, you're not going to see any eco bonuses to work with. It's just Byzantine units are so incredibly strong. 
And if it does go late, they've got cheap counters. All their buildings are stronger as well. Even their castles are ridiculous. It's not like, <laughs> it's no joke to have almost 7,000 HP on a castle. And Viper, we didn't see an approach in the first game where he wanted to take his time and take it to late game because he looked at the Bohemians and said that would be a death sentence. Here he can do that. And I've never seen a, a big post-Imperial battle between these two civilizations ever. So I'm rather excited to see how that goes. Oh, I'm seeing some weird things here. Let's go back to the Dog of Hera. He is building it next to the Sea Tower, but there's no shorefish next to the Sea Tower. Well, by, by, on design, right. by design, right? Yeah, yeah, Always true. some distance, therefore you want to go a bit further away. Viper knows that, and therefore he built his further away. But look at that, he got really unfortunate there. Mangrove Forest is blocking some of the shorefish generation. So if Hera is building his first dock in an area where there is usually no fish, mm -hmm. and we have to assume that Hera's got insane preparation here, which I imagine he does, does that tell us that Hera's maybe going for a second dock, which would be closer to the fish later on? Or it's just going to be a fast castle. He will accept that he will have a bit more inefficiency, but it's way easier for him to save the fishing ships. Okay, interesting. Yeah, we'll see the approach. Viper getting loom, which is an indicator he'll be headed to Feudal Age here. Mm -hmm. uh, Viper's golds are really not the best here if you wanted to play the wall aspect. This is kind of the problem with shoals sometimes. Hera's gold, for example, you look at that one on the right. That wow. one's that one's a dream. Oh. Not to mention like a full wall with wood, and that one's a dream. So okay. there's a big discrepancy with the map gens, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So it could be, you know, Viper, either his game plan has changed because of the map, or maybe he feels like this is the best opening. Anyways, if he if he's able to, you know, have a fast castle type of game, though, obviously that that whole area for him is going to be good. But he is going to click up to feudal age here, so it is not a fast castle for the Viper. Hmm, fast feudal for Byzantines. Not a lot of bonuses working for you here. Typically, you want to play galleys, not really fire galleys. Don't really see him going for too many dogs. There's a bit of map control, a bit of poking. I'm a bit surprised. We've seen a similar approach by Jordan yesterday with that stacks. Mm -hmm. It didn't pay off. So you know what? I think some players... Well, I, I haven't seen many players do this at all on this map that I think even at this level players should consider. Look in the north for Hera. In the very north, of the, like the back of his base, you've got some extra deer there. Mm -hmm. And I think even with uh, you know other sieves, you could build a mill. But if you look to the corners, you're almost always going to see extra deer. So sometimes players are going to build mills there. I'd like to see maybe a mule cart. I think Viper pushed those, or somehow it's just one. That would have been a long way to push, actually. Might be bucked a bit there with the relic, with the wood line there. Top but it could be good, and flip. even next to the gold, right? Like, in some ways, there's going to be deer, so if you're going out to TC, you can grab the deer right before you hit Castle Age and then yeah. drop the TC. It's just, like, a, a small thing that I think can really help players. Yeah, and we have seen that approach often when people went for Mongols here, right? Getting yeah. the early yeah. uptime, getting all the aggression, and then with that, trying to control the hunt, Viper goes for the second dog, and he opens Fire Galley, no galley approach, and Terra, as expected, with the fast castle, is a bit scared of land aggression though, and now goes for heavy walling. Villager shouldn't really be in danger so close to the town center. Well, I mean, I Viper oh. could block it. Viper could block it. No loom for Hera. And Viper's dodging the TC fire, and Viper's gonna get it. Doink! Viper gets a beautiful play there from the Viper, and he can actually flee this now, nearly, mm -hmm. as long as he doesn't run into that sea tower, and that scout will survive. Okay, good start here for the Viper. Now Hera, though, he kind of knows, okay, you traded off this one villager against a lot of HP, that's maybe something you wouldn't do if you tried to make something like an archer aggression happen. Yeah, yourself. yeah, true. I think Hera knows, okay, I don't have to prioritize the walls that much anymore. Yeah, Viper. He'll be happy with that, though, because when you're up against the fast castle, especially when Hera's fast castling, you are concerned that you're going to fall behind economically in some ways, right? And so you want to get every kill you can. We, we said and tried to point out how good the map of Hera is. But with the early uptime, look at the Hera's base design now. That's fair. Yeah, he, di he didn't really get the scouting in on it. And Hera's a little concerned about any potential Viper pressure, so yeah. doesn't look like it's the cleanest right now. He can always delete the Palisade walls, though. He could delete the Palisade to move out there. Mm -hmm. And now he's going to be free to move around with his scout to get more intel. How's Viper doing on water here? Because the Sea Tower is a problem for him. I'm surprised he's gone for a fire. I know he's Byzantines, but when Yo was playing this... Yeah. I would, Yo actually went two galleys first and then switched into fires later on. Yeah, and it's easier to defend with galleys. Obviously, Byzantine want to benefit from their bonus as well, and that's why Viper is following it up with the galley. Yep. Yeah, I see people 
so excited about these, this series. People getting here maybe for the first time this week. This is the second time that Hera is facing Viper as a GL player. Actually, they did play in the group stage. Hera recently joining GL. I don't know how many strategies were shared between the two over the last 48 hours, though. I would guess zero. <laughs> I would guess so as well. I think that there's, for now in this tournament, it feels a bit more like, okay, we are competitors. We are trying to feel ourselves out. And I think then in the future, when we have team game tournaments, when both are like really going into it, going in all the practice, both representing GL, then I think we will see the strategies merge a bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Makes sense when everyone's playing against each other here. Fishing ship still alive for Hera. Hera will be in Castellate soon. Viper about to click up. A Hera scout did kill Viper scout, which I do think is a big deal here. Viper won't be able to see if Hera's adding a barracks or a stable or anything. And interesting to see that Hera goes for a galley. Viper finally gets a fishing ship kill, so maybe an indicator that Hera wants to move out to snipe Viper's fish. But against fires, I think you're going to need a few more galleys. Mm, yeah, I think it's mainly for the defense, right? Try, try to protect the fish. The sea tower will help out, so the dock placement kind of makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it is more inefficient, but all of them protected. Ooh, Ooh potential problem. Well, yeah, I think Viper should know, though, that uh, that scout is left, and he should know that there's a hole there. Yeah. Are you thinking about this, though, right? Because the scout was seen last, like, 30 seconds ago, and when will he see it the next time? Well, you would see it, like, near your main TC. Right, like Hera's not going to just sit there with the scout. You are right, though, that I mean, Viper hasn't reacted to it right now, and it might not be of huge importance to him. And he doesn't have his own scout to double check those things. But that stable tells me he will probably add one here, Nilly. Mm -hmm. And he will do so as we have a little bit of navy here from Hera. But the big thing, the important thing, especially with the Armenian eco, is that second town center for Hera going up at home. Seven fishing ships against four here. Hera did a really good job of keeping his fishing ships alive. Can't have too much HP there. Hera not rushing the second wood upgrade. A bit of a surprise to me, honestly. Yeah, and it, it's not cheaper, but it's more efficient, yeah. right? That's yeah. what it is. So I suppose there could be uh, some argument. Oh, you said Hera was getting it or wasn't getting it? I think he just got it, right? Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. Hera's got it. And Viper and Hera still just kind of going back and forth, taking relatively even trades on water. Hera wants this kill desperately. Hera won't get it. Viper runs away. And uh, there's Viper's second TC. So again, this is going to go late, Nilly. What is your late game army comp with the Armenians? I think we need to start there because we understand the Byzantines yeah. can be cataphracts, halbs, skirms, camels, but Armenians. That's, that's the big question, right? And we, I think we can actually do something we very rarely do and think about it twice with the tech tree, right? We can go for Composite Bowman, a unit that ignores the armor of the opponent, so a bit better against Skirmishers there, but Skirmishers are still reasonably good against them. Yeah. Other option is to simply go for Champions. With plus 30 HP, they end up at 100 HP, probably the direction that feels most likely. Yeah, now, now I think that's the first time I've ever heard you with excitement in your voice say, let's go infantry against Byzantines, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because the Byzantines have the Cataphract, the Byzantines have Arbalest. It's normally very dangerous, but I suppose if you get 100 HP on your uh, infantry, which the Armenians do, maybe you could get away with it. And then if you have the, the unique unit mixed in, it could shred the armor of the Cataphract. So, yeah, maybe that's what happens. But Viper finally going to get a full clear up on water. He's going to kill the fish. He's going to end up killing Hera's galley. And Viper added a trade cog by mistake. Viper with a trade opportunity on water. This is not a flex, folks. This is a misclick in an important moment. We've seen this. We saw this in the qualifier from doubt. And Viper is moving forward with his trade cog Give to a prediction. try How much trade. Gold? How much gold, Tristan? Eight. No. Six. Oh, I would say 12. Uh, 15. Wait, 8 Hello. plus 6. I, I meant I was 8 plus 6. That was my guess. Why have I, how is 8 plus 6 <laughs> your guess? That's not how it works, Tristan. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I didn't you didn't establish the rules. Okay. Now well, I know for next time. You now I know for next time. Okay. okay. Next next trip, I'll get it. Obviously, he's not going to make any more here cuz that was not intended. I mean, he could that could pay off eventually, right? We'll see. Harris mm -hmm. not going to do anything about it, so 10 trips to be even. He will get there. He will get there. Not bad. But well, you shouldn't take kill, out the dog. Don't kill the dog! Viper, take out the sea tower, bro. That's 2% uh. of your economy. <laughs> Big mistake. I love how Hera is making a demo to defend on water. 
Oh man, you want such to stop a, the trade? Yeah, such a boomy game right now. But Scout goes down there for Viper. Now that is a Warrior Priest there for Hera. That Warrior Priest can heal, it can attack, and it can pick up relics. It cannot convert like a normal monk can. And Viper just lost another Scout. I mean, that Viper losing two Scouts right there is not normal, in my yeah. opinion. That is definitely showing signs of maybe some rust here to start the series. The trade cog sign that maybe there's some rust here. Um, Hera's got three relics already. Hera's got a crazy eco. And uh, Res collected Hera already almost 2,000 resources ahead. On the couch, Hera's, ooh, Shine coming in with the big lead donation there. Thank you so much. Obviously, 100% of the donations are going directly into the prize pool. Viper's body language going to the set, something I didn't like. He wasn't excited to set up his PC. He was lying on the couch a bit, walked the dog. I think he was like energetic. I didn't like see He's any tired. drive. He's tired. Going into it. Yeah, yeah. He, he was tired. Absolutely. He was tired. We were talking about the length of the series. But, you know, you kind of hope that, you know, you, you take a sip of Red Bull and then you're, you're ready to go. But Viper was, was a slow starter yesterday as well in that best of seven against Dow. And he came back to win 4 3. It just, you know, feels like Hera is a is higher caliber, maybe the highest caliber here. Mm -hmm. So to have a slow start against him makes life so difficult for you. Yeah. Luckily, he invested a low pick, right? But this one, it feels like we can easily have the series running out of control. If yep. we go down 0-2 and then Hera still has very strong picks left for himself and then we are kind of facing a civilization where you need to have wins against his first or second pick. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, having seen Hera and Viper play a lot over the past year, I feel like the sets normally go one of two ways. It's normally very close, can go either way. Mm -hmm. For example, the 4-3 victory for the Viper right before NAC with these same settings. Or, if Viper's not clicking, it can... There have been some landslide victories towards Hera, right? And, uh, you know, I think 5-0 in, like, King of the Desert happened. Um, and maybe there are some other examples. So the good news here for the Viper, even though Hera's getting this incredible economic setup, is that the Byzantines don't really need to have a ridiculous economy to compete, right? You can be at 100 villagers and still somehow get 100 army, and there's not really any other civilizations that can say that. So as Hera's gone five relics right now, Nilly. Five relics, which is ridiculous. And also building a TC on the gold. We'll see what Viper wants to build up towards here. I think the Byzantines can bail you out of bad situations. And if Viper knows about that TC and builds a castle there, could start to really mount some pressure there on Hera. It's ridiculous in two ways. First of all, five relics is really nice. But secondly... Viper actually actively contested this, right? He tagged into Lightcap, has four Lightcap out on the map, had some scouts earlier, and Hera still got away with it. Obviously, he generates one with the uh, Fortified Church that he's building, right? He only picked up four. Yeah. But still, that's massive with all the investment Viper put onto it. Well, you know, this, is, this comes back to the Armenians, though, right? Because you have a Warrior Priest. You don't have a Monk. The Warrior Priest can fight off Lightcap when they come in, and Lightcap do still have some bonus damage, but to my knowledge, I, a, an unupgraded Lightcap dies to a Warrior Priest in the 1v1, right? So Hera has, has really paid close attention there, and we saw an instance where Hera killed two Lightcap with a Warrior Priest and just a scout. Like, Hera's just done a really good job. But also, the flip side of this is, think back to the castle times. Hera was in Castle Age really early, so he had that monastery up, he was able to get that first relic, and, uh, you know, then he was able, as Hera's going to wall in Viper's villager here, Viper wow. can escape if he deletes his outpost. If he deletes his outpost. Viper's actually... Oh, wall it's in Hera's... <laughs> <laughs> Viper's like, I'm just going to, you know, wall you in with your own stuff here. You're not going to do that to me. And now Viper's going to drop a castle on Hera. And Hera has to be careful here with these villagers. Has enough stone for his own castle pretty soon, but Viper with the aggression. And it feels like Hera will have the advantage, but I'm not sure if he can really... Well, three warrior Perfect. priests are on the way. I think with three warrior priests on the way, Hera's just going to fight this off. Some of those units are weak. The warrior priest will kill what's left. The castle will go up here for Hera. And how frequently can you say that someone is going to have a two-minute advantage trebling the Byzantines? Mm-hmm. Very, very rarely. And also having the villager advantage, right? He's roughly 20 builds ahead there. Fishing ships, obviously, not that efficient anymore. And, ooh. Hera has a plan. I really like this. I, I really like this from Hera because he's probably thinking, I'm going to have an edge on land. I'm going to start winning the treb war there. And if I can get away with just trebs, which at least from what I'm currently seeing, he could maybe get away with, then I could go for the Armenian Navy. And the Armenian Navy is ridiculously strong. 
Um, and do they hit Drummonds? I believe they do. They do. Wow. And they got the best Drummonds. We have the two best Drummonds going against each other here with the faster firing, with the extra range. It's it's pretty ridiculous. Basically, a little mangonel on water that is incredibly good against low HP units or buildings. And I, I think Hera might dominate the water. And look at that. He actually goes for war galley. Doesn't go for the fire. Though. Well, I think I think if you just go for Dramans, though, you don't have protection. And you need protection against Byzantines because Byzantines have the strong fire ships. Mm -hmm. Right? So you, you can't, as exciting as it is to just go Draman here, you need to have war galley. And with the unique tech that the Armenians have, their, their war galleys, their demos, everything's so strong. And Hera, he just has to make sure his trebs are actually going after Viper's castle here. That is a Byzantine castle. By the way, Viper's mining gold here. Hera's not. And Viper is TCing the right-hand side. That's the concern for Hera right now, is just the fact he's currently running out of gold at his base, but obviously has the relics, right? Having the relics is a big factor and feels like he's in a pretty good spot if he gets his castle up to be able to take the gold here away from Viper. Wood income not really fair right now. Viper sits at basically 120% from the generic income. On the other side, 156%. Therefore, I would expect Hera to get onto a big fleet way quicker. Yeah, and Viper just forgot Bosal here or maybe didn't have the resources for it because, you know, he spent so much wood in Feudal Age. Maybe it didn't feel natural. Most likely an upgrade that he's just simply forgotten at this point. But this is, this is just, are you clicking, right? The players have excellent strategy and excellent skill, but when it comes to the high-pressure moments, can you bring it? Viper's Cataphracts starting to deny this castle. Viper also coming in with fires. I feel, find this engagement pretty reasonable for the Viper. Yeah. Getting a lot of damage. Very reasonable here. Might deny this castle for quite some time. Fires also getting an engagement that they normally should not have gotten. Yeah, I think Hera just maybe thought his position was going to be good here, and this castle might be denied completely, and Viper's got his first treb. And Viper's still going to be stubborn on the left side here, Nilly, while having access to gold on that right area. Oh, look at all those upgrades that are now coming in. Heavy demo. We also get shipwrights, so better demos. Still unique tech missing, but after that, faster production and cheaper ships when it comes to the wood. Hera setting himself up beautifully for the water play. Yeah, and once you get, once you have a demo or two in the mix, the fires from Viper will do nothing. Mm -hmm. And then you mix in the Dramans, and the Dramans can control so much from the shoreline, right? You could take out castles, production buildings, eco even. So Hera finally takes out Viper's castle and still has his own trebs. He's going to advance forward again, maybe. But it, right now, Viper needs something more on, on well, water and land, in all honesty. The thing is, I don't think you can really contest Armenians on water. I think Viper's number one priority right now is to, land. to keep Hera away from the gold. Yeah. Yeah, and then Byzantines, you know, I guess if they do lose gold, you do have that, that you could possibly survive. But like we said, Armenians are going to have options against gold units. The Trebor is still happening here. Hera has water. Viper's losing that. But this Trebor is the most important thing now. And Hera's got four Trebs, now five Trebs coming onto our screen. And Viper just has one. Silesian fleet. Better demos there. Better drawment. This is absolutely crazy. Bombard cannons, they have to dictate this fight. Yeah. I think those are the heroes. Oh! No! Oh, that is horrible for the Viper and incredibly fortunate for Hera. I mean, you've got to make your own luck, Nilly. But the way Trebs are, sometimes they don't hit the exact spot you're looking for. And Viper's got another bomber, con was bomber cannon coming in. See if Hera notices this. Was this a ground attack maybe by Hera? I, I don't know. We could look for a replay. Now Hera notices this, right? So oh. he's clicked and Viper's going to micro. And he is dodging the shots here. He's still repairing his castle. This bomber cannon, the most important unit for the Viper right now. Five traps out there. Bombard Cannon needs to micro. More trap shots are coming in. Composite Bowman going in deep. Not really protected by the castle. Viper, he needs to keep this Bombard Cannon alive. It feels like he has to back away though, Nilly, which means the traps from Hera could still go after the castle. There's another cannon coming. Hera doesn't have any units to really push in with that are melee here, but I do see him getting stable techs. So he's thinking about a stable switch. Keep in mind, Hera has full water dominance and can do so much with that. The Dramans are sitting there, could be ranging cannons pretty soon. And Viper, no! Viper almost loses that cannon. Oh, yo, yo, really, really close there. Both players going for crazy numbers when it comes to villagers. 165 against 148. Yeah, it's insane, right? Because at this point, like, you're, you're just spam villagers, micro, mixed in some army here. But I'm really liking Hera's army. I like the upgrades that he's flying with, in with. He'll have the armor, he'll have the attack, 
and look at all those stables going up. And he's even using the scout oh, no. and out microing the castle fire. Nerd! So he can take out that trebuchet. Wow! Yeah, obviously trebs from a, from uh, the right side were still taking out Viper's treb, and Viper had no resistance. So you know, we applaud Hera for that, but I think Viper just doesn't have he doesn't have enough right now. He's going skirms against Lightcap. Yeah, sounds horrible, but you wouldn't really expect our minions to go for Lightcap, right? Monastery here, I think that was even intentionally getting those relics out. Viper, ah, yeah, yeah, he sees a lot of pressure. Military count, not pretty for him. No, no, the, I mean, the series has not been pretty for him, Nilly, to be completely honest with you. The first game, he went for a YOLO strategy, and perhaps it was the Civ matchup, but here, Byzantines, I mean, they've done so well on this map throughout this tournament, but the approach from Hera has been way better, and his eco has been superior, and now he can flood the map, and he's got the Composite Bowman, he's got the Light Cav, and look at Hera's resources. I mean, he's not finished yet, Nearly, There's so many techs that he could consider so uh, yet with the Armenians. I love the play from Hera here, right? Sees, okay, I'm winning the left-hand side. What is the way how you can maybe come back? If you get enough gold and maybe can get to a crazy army to kill me, that's why I'm taking map control on the right side. Yep, and this map is very frequently boom towards him, right? And Hera just fully accepted that. Four or five town centers, got the relics. He didn't do anything really fancy towards the middle, but he's so good and he's so consistent. And I think the Viper right now is having a moment very similar to that moment in the series yesterday against Doubt where he's realizing he's dead, he's gonna be 0-2 down, and he's gonna have to, to somehow find something in him to turn this around, because this is not the Viper that people were expecting to see today. He has more time, right? Yesterday against Doubt, it was a best of seven. Now we have a best of nine. Viper's body language clearly saying how unhappy he is with his games. Hera in full cruise control. Yep, and this is what we said. Hera so consistent. He has brought the level that you expect from him every single time. There's our live viewing here in Berlin. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be there. I think some people, I saw Mem and Freakin' Andy and others there earlier. Uh, you and I will join them later on. But uh, right now, maybe the crowd there is a little shocked at what we've seen here, but not shocked by what Harris brought to the table, that's for sure. No, that's exactly what we expected, right? The highest level of Age of Empires. He is just someone that you can't have a bad day against. The thing is, like, we need to see peak Viper here to compete. And if it's not peak Viper, then Hera just runs over him. And game number one, obviously, we can maybe put something on the civilizations. Hera, the good advantage. Game number two, it just felt like Hera was in full control and never really felt that close. Yeah, typically it's the small moments with Viper, right? It's the tiny little scout moments when going for the relics. Very rarely are you going to see Viper not get the relics. Mm -hmm. he, it was, what, five or six there for Hera. Um, the eco upgrades, too, like Bosaw wasn't in for Viper. You said he was looking a little lethargic before the series. It's a little late here, but that is also like somewhat common. <laughs> He's been in any seas before. Mm -hmm. You know, we kind of know the drill. But don't, at, at the same time, don't count Viper out because yep. Doubt demolished him in two straight games yesterday. Mm -hmm. And then we had a seven-game set where Viper came back and won 4-3. So I... I'm really excited to see this particular game because I think if you go 3-0 down against Hera, unlikely you come back even being the Viper. But you turn it around here, I think things could start to look up for him. But as you mentioned in the set that they played like two weeks ago on the same settings, Hera was leading 3-1 against the Viper as well. Viper was able to win three games in a row. So even if we go down 3-0, Viper can equalize the set. Obviously, Hera also maybe not 100% in this one. Now he, This is like peak Hera. And this is an absolute beauty to watch and so deadly if you are sitting on the other side in this room. Also, it has to feel really good with beating the Armenians with the Byzantines based on the priority of the draft there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Based on draft priority, Viper had the superior civilization and Hera got the job done. That's a big deal here. Would be a lot different if maybe Vipers used another bottom pick like the Britons and ended up losing, but it was the Byzantines. And so Viper thinking about what he wants next. Do you begin to think about, since you know you're going to have to win five games mm -hmm. right from here, do you begin to think about maybe playing one of Hera's maps or do you still go for the closed maps? Because Hera's done great on the Boomy map so far. I think I'm going for another of my home maps. Okay. I need some confidence. I need to show up. I need to feel like, okay, this is now a real set. We need to get into it. Obviously, if you... Now maybe pick Rocky Forest and tell Hera, wow, well, I'm picking your number one pick and you clap him. Well, then it's completely wide open again. But I think the more likely approach might be something like Arena, play the light calf game and go for the macro approach. Okay, we'll see. 
But fact of the matter is, Viper's got to get a win on the table here for people to have confidence in him. Let's see if he can turn it around. Hera has been so insane so far. Game one, um, as clean as can be against the pressure. Game two, his boom was phenomenal. In fact, if you were to combine the res collected from both games, it would not look good. Like, if you were to just put them all in one stat right now, <laughs> Hera might have collected like 25,000 more resources or something insane. <laughs> So here we are, game three, okay. and it is Copenhagen. So we, we talked about, do you maybe go to a more open map if you're the Viper? Clearly he says, no, I don't want to do that. We've got Mayans for Hera here on the only regicide start that we have in NAC5, and we've got Chinese for the Viper, it, which is interesting because uh, Mayans and Chinese, very good on regicide fortress, which this map is kind of inspired by, uh, but there is water on this, and Mayans and Chinese, they do struggle compared to some other civilizations we've seen picked with the water aspect. Yeah, and this one what, is... What? what? Oh. How do, what just happened? Viper loses his scout to the castle there from Hera, and the, the castle positions are fixed, Nilly. It's always exactly at this spot. How can you lose your scout? Well, that's, yeah. that tells us right there that something's not clicking, right? Exhaustion, something, but you always know that castle's there. Now... I should also say, and uh, is, hold on, can I see, is Yo over there? This is Okay, I don't see Yo, so I think I can say this. At least it wasn't a king. <laughs> At least it wasn't a freaking king, Mr. Yo. Jeez, uh, anyways, but, um, but still losing the scout is horrible. Like, look at also the past. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, he knows the castle's there now. Surely he's not going to go. He uh, is he? He can't. No, he's he's not he's not going. Okay, to. But, okay. But, let's, but let's let's recenter ourselves, right? Yeah, yeah. So the big things you need to scout on this map would obviously be relics. Other aspects of the map are fixed, like the water. But um, you know that that water on the right hand side is not what both players are going to prioritize. They're going to prioritize the left, and it is going to be water opening for both. We've got the Mayans with the plumed archers and the eagles. Very hard to stop if they can get to a big mass of plumes and eagle warriors. Chinese though, they start with extra villagers. And they have the Chu Canoe, and then pretty much everything else you would want. Um, their, their infantry could be an option. Their cav could be an option. You pick Chinese for the discounted eco, the, um, and then the, the options, nearly. So having seen this matchup a lot, not necessarily on this map, I find it quite close. Yeah. The big question will be, how we, are we going to see Onages, right? Onages can be really nice against Plumed Archers, can be really nice against the Chu Canoes. I'm curious to see if that will be an option. Obviously, Eagle Warrior feels like the craziest unit here, especially once we get Eldorado and they suddenly jump to 100 HP. Yeah, it's really interesting. Now, this is going to seem a little off topic. They're both, both, little, both making galleys, and we'll be fighting each other here in a second, though. But, you know, just to Viper's shape right now, I remember hearing Leary, who is probably one of the big surprises here at NIC5, the fact that he was bottom two, uh, giving an interview, and he was just saying, you know, I feel like I'm playing well. He's like, but I just showed up and I played this series and it just, it, I wasn't there. It didn't click. And he goes, that's like the first time ever for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting on the other side and I said, he didn't hear me. I said, welcome to being a freaking human, <laughs> yeah. right? Because I can relate with that every single yeah, time yeah. I play. Um, but, you know, with, with the, the best players, you don't really see that. We become used to not seeing that with Viper for the seven or eight years. He's winning everything. You didn't see that, but we're clearly seeing Things aren't, you know, he's looking a little bit more human at the start here. So the hope for Viper is you build this up in small moments. Build up your confidence, take some good engagements, and then if he gets a win here, maybe that scout's forgotten. Three fishing ships against four. More greedy approach by the Viper. Has two galleys there for the defense. Still two behind Hera. Is he stopping after four galleys? He has no more in the queue. Okay, now he queues up again. Yeah, they probably just caught him at an, at an off moment. Now, if you lose the king, folks, you are defeated. Uh, and Viper's still scouting with his king because his scout is dead. However, the Eagle Warrior is slow, so the Eagle Warrior cannot outrun the king. So Viper should be fine there. I think that's longer, right? One hour eight? Did we? Ah, oh, well, the be. longest NAC5, what is that, like a trivia? That, that feels that's like trivia. it's part of a, a game show or something. Well, it's just like, that is kind of implying that the longest is... One hour, ten minutes. <laughs> uh, Viper's King has been attacked by the Eagle, and I'm not at all stressed about it. I'm completely fine. Okay, why I'm did completely you, why fine. Why did you just jump? <laughs> I'm completely fine. Uh, why are you jumping, Tristan? 
not. This is fine. It's blinking on the mini map. It's freaking me out, but I think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be brutal. But yeah, like we said, if that's a if that's a scout, if that's a unit on a horse, mm -hmm. then that could actually be problematic. But that dude can run pretty quick for a guy with no shoes. But I think he's fine. I didn't even know he didn't have shoes. Well, I never. I don't think we need to zoom in on its feet. That would be a little weird. Huh? Might include oh. Um, oh. I think Tarantino might. Zoom in. <laughs> Tarantino. All right. All right, Nilly. <laughs> I like that. Oh man. Well, okay. So both players a little sloppy with their scouts there. I think Hera probably should have kept that eagle alive, but they're they're macroing. They're setting up the Rico for Castle Age, and so far on water, it's been very close. And now Hera go uh, don't have. <laughs> Okay, third try. <laughs> Viper moves out with his king again. <laughs> because he now knows, okay, the eagle is dead, and he wants to confirm if there's actually a dock at the bottom. Hera sent out a spearman, but actually, wait, wait, wait. Did he, this did this spearman kill the... The yeah. hunt, it did. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. So Hera, so I was just going to say that Hera brought the spear yeah. forward. This has actually been a relatively common approach, because you do start with the barracks on this map, and he just used the Spearman to kill the Hunt. I think everyone should be doing that, Nilly. Yeah. I don't think there's anything that really stops you from doing that. And I think it's a good move. Small thing here is Viper moves out to dock. There are wolves, and players should know this. Every generation is going to have wolves, and there's, there, there's a villager being attacked on the shoreline. And Viper has wad the wall in his villager here. So you know the wolf is there, but you hope to have a scout to help your he villager. Walks in the wo he walks in the wolf. Oh! Oh! <laughs> and he walls in the wolf. Well played. He's got four HP, so he has to be careful if there's a spearman out there from Hera. And still they micro here on the water. And then I also think Hera's spearman was just saved near the castle against a wolf. So there's actually a lot of small things that have happened. Yep, there we go. <laughs> That's an unloomed villager, and he went out there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little greedy, right? But, you know, when Viper is firing on all cylinders, you begin to expect that, right? Mm -hmm. He can move out without loom. He can get the quick walls. He can scout the whole map with his king and be fine. Right now, KD for the Viper. Four kills, two deaths. He is going to be faster to the castle age as well, so this is a good position. 3-1 KD here on water. Remember, both players lost their scout or eagle, respectively. Six galleys only for Hera. He will give up water here. I was going to ask you, at what point can you just stop investing here to water? Because, because, like, yeah, if you give up, your opponent can fish, but there's not that many fish to begin with anyways. So I actually really like Hera's approach here. I think you could maybe try and get past Viper to try and kill his fish before you die. But ultimately, if you look at Hera's wood count, I wouldn't even mind him buying, you know, some stone, go instantly for, like, a 4TC boom or something. Yeah, not unlikely, right? We start with an awkward amount of 150 stone here on Red's side, and that's why maybe... Sniping the fish? No. Dodge that one. And that's why the instant 3TC is not an option. Hera now docks at the bottom, wants to contest this area with the three relics. Yeah, Viper's going to get War Galley. We'll see if Viper, remember, he doesn't have a scout, so we'll see if he makes any navy there on that pond. He's actually making a galley, which is designed to stop any docks from going up. So he's going to find out the hard way that Hera's already there. And... Again, we expect players to add TCs, but man, I mean, if Viper builds a TC out of his base, he doesn't have the hunt anymore. Hera does. Hera, knowing Viper is invested more into water, is going to try and get by here. He's going to try and kill the fish, but Viper's going to deal with most of this well played. Oh, yeah. And one gets by with 8 HP, will easily get chased down, and Viper. Now, the question is is he adding fish here? He's heavily on stone. Six on stone already? That is kind of weird to me. This is super weird. This is super weird. Like, typically, you know, you can go for the second, the third TC and, and, and have the stone a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Going to stone now makes me think that Viper might want, like, a castle in the central area for map control on a faster Imperial Age or something, but it does not feel like the natural Chinese game we've come to expect on this map. Is this maybe a 2TC aggression, but we see Viper maybe with his wolf again. Sees this one, walls him in. Nice move, but... <laughs> He's going around. I like the graphic here. This is actually making it way more confusing. <laughs> okay, we got the same highlight all over again. Good. Uh, A for effort, though. A for effort. Okay, here we go. Villagers now. It traps so. Ah, okay, all right, we close. get it. We okay. get it. We get it. It's all good. We get it. We appreciate it. Viper had a great quick wall with against the wolf like 10 minutes ago. And plumed archers are out for Hera, which I think is a really important unit in this matchup but not so much against that, uh, that war galley there. So Hera's gonna need to add some fires. 
Watch the play here for what is the on gold there without the mining camp as well, the Viper? Um not sure what's the you're one at the right side there. He's Dude, waiting something for more wood. It, it doesn't like I'm looking at this eco, it doesn't look normal. One farm. It doesn't look normal. What is happening here? And you look at Harris and it's just like what you would expect, right? You're gonna have farming set up, you're gonna have the second TCs, adding armies, getting relics. This is like Viper's struggling here, man. He's really struggling. There's no other way to, to really say it. And, you know, you don't want to take anything away from Hera because Hera's playing phenomenally well. Mm -hmm. But it does feel like a combination of, of Viper not quite clicking and Hera, of course, bringing the level we're used to. This eco balance is rough for the snake. Mass amount of idols. Not really using the. Those are still the two villagers on gold there. I don't really see it. This no horse collar. The trends. No horse collar so with off. Chinese. Yeah, it, it's it's really. I mean, we saw a lot from Viper this week. The transition is worse than, than pretty much any other time. This right. is brutal. He does have a vill lead, right? He does have a villager lead. He can build up towards a castle eventually. Hera is going to be on three TCs, but Hera has the edge here on water. No. And Hera, I think, has the better range shooting out of the castle anyways. I think Elite Plumed Archer is a bit superior to Chukunu in the long run. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. And, like, Chinese has to be ahead in economy, right? They are kind of trading off, okay, I have the better economy, but later on my units will struggle a bit, especially against the Plumes, especially against the Eagles. So we typically would expect him to be out on the map, have the map aggression, have the better economy. I don't really see that. I would love to see Hera stick with Plumes. And it's Hera, so the expectation is that he'll do that. And then build a, a eventual castle defensive. I don't think you need to rush for the middle. And then go for a big army of plumed archers in combination with Elite Eagle. I think Elite Eagle Warrior with El Dorado and plumed archers, very difficult for the Chinese. Chinese would have to go Chukunu and then probably Cavalier with that. Yeah, the big question is, can you afford that, right? It's really costly going for all those gold units, especially once you go, if you want to go for Elite Eagles and El Dorado. Hera, I wouldn't even be surprised if he wants to go for four TCs then and get the numbers out. Maybe a demo. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, Viper needs something. And Hera backs away. And Hera maybe felt like, I, uh, let's not take the risk here. The wolf is back. Pretty good. And the wolf, kid, the wolf goes down. Siege Workshop now at such a weird spot as well, Tristan. There's so little map control for the Viper, not really moving towards the bottom. And those awkward 300 stone that we see floating. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just really tells me it, he wasn't sure in his plan. Yeah. Viper did lose a monk, by the way, to an eagle, which is pretty sick that Hera did that. Uh, it was minutes ago. We just saw the, the carcass there. Do you call it? It's not a carcass. It's a body. <laughs> but um, and we're going to see Bod Canero now. I mean... Bod Canero is something Viper has had for a long time on his Chukunu. It's just the Plumed Archers are a lot faster. But I think Viper recognizes right now that the Plumed Archers for Hera are back here somewhere. Viper also, quote-unquote, only four fishing ships. He won water such a long time ago. Would have expected him to be going a bit higher there, maybe add some fish traps, kind of take another advantage that way. Yeah, Siege Edition is not something I was expecting, especially when you have the superior ranged numbers. It's, it seems like big investment to also mix in the Siege. Yeah. But, man, that is a lot of Chukunu. Hera will see this. This is giving Hera a lot of intel. And Hera getting ballistics now. And Hera will see the Siege as well. I think if you see the Siege, if you're Hera, and you see where the Chukunu are, you take your moment while you can, and you get out of here. <laughs> yeah. And don't produce more plumes till you click him, right? Because y you can't really use them anyways. Unless you really want to commit and you just feel like, okay, will take me some time to go for another cast, but we see the Chukunu not getting away. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually like Chukunu production here still. I think it can be really good. Chuk I also think a demo here could be epic. Oh. A demo here could be epic. Viper sees it. Viper sees it. It should never happen. And uh, it does do damage, but yeah. the Chukunu survive. That's quite some damage, right? Didn't it do like 200 damage here? I think we need to get some healing. Next fight would be pretty horrible here for the Viper, and going through there might <laughs> be tricky. Yeah, exactly. Do you want to break that gate down? <laughs> I don't think you want to break that gate down. I mean, I know it feels natural, but you just saw what the demo did a couple tiles away from the shoreline. House feels more natural, right? We have two there. You're also getting another Come advantage. Come on, Viper. Don't go through there, dude. He's going to have confidence right. in himself to shoot the demo down. Uh, yeah, this no, no, is no, he's too scared. Okay. And rightfully so, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is giving Hera time to think about that next castle. And I feel like that general area we're looking at right there is the perfect spot for the castle. Tristan, close your eyes. Why? Give me the relic count. 
Oh, um, well, I mean, with how this game has gone, Hera probably got two in the middle and three from the pawn, so I'm going to say five for Hera and one for Viper. Very reasonable. Oh, it's six even worse. Six one. And yeah. Hera knows where Viper's army is, so he doesn't have to be anywhere near it for the time being, and he actually goes for a middle castle. If that castle goes up and he can make Trebs out of it, Viper's castle will likely go down. Monks here, not too few by Hera. Could he maybe even stop this army? Castle in the center. That is that is interesting. That he feels like okay, he can go that aggressively. Yeah. And right now we only have one Mangal out on the field. Yeah, it's it is interesting to me. I mean, it's actually pretty epic if Hera can defend from this now. Because I would have thought build a castle where he just built that siege workshop. Yeah, yeah. Right? And then you you maintain your eco lead, you have safe plume production. But now you have the forward castle and Viper, he wasn't able to do too much to Hera because Hera added his own siege. Uh -oh. And yet uh -oh. again, this has been super clean from Hera, but he's got to be careful here. And he does split away from the shot. He has ballistics. Viper does as well, though. Hera has to be careful here. What what on earth is this? Uh, and that's really weird. Did he think, okay, I did the damage with the demo earlier. I can take this engagement. But against the Mangano, that's unnecessary risk. Yep, absolutely. Hera with a bit of a misstep there. He didn't lose that much, though. Still has the forward castle. And he will be able to treb down Viper. And Viper is building another castle here. And Hera's going to make another castle here. Well, we're going to have a crazy treb war. Where's the Mangonal? We need to see where the second Mangonal is. Is he sending it towards the bottom? Oh, it's around here. That castle should not go up. At Viper's point of view, Viper's Fog of War would be great to see. His Chukunu automatically start attacking this. Hera with another castle, which you might not associate with him. He normally plays very safe, but he's going for the kill here. And the Mangonel from the Viper just misses. Viper still intent on getting this castle up. Good micro from Hera. Again, Plumes feel superior in these engagements. And Hera's pulled the Vils away. He is getting imp upgrades. And I think this castle will go up for him. After Bracer's in, most likely. Viper, I'm a bit surprised that we don't see the second Mangonel there. Oh, but now full Chukunu numbers. Not so sure about this castle anymore. I, I really like Bracer here. I love Bracer on Plumes. I think Hera, with his own siege on the way, could maybe be okay. I mean, I, I can understand what you're thinking, Nilly. The more I look at this, actually, it's looking pretty risky. Viper's still not allowing it to go up, which means that Trebs can't be produced from this castle yet. We have double castle there for the Viper. Still heavily on soon. I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to build a counter castle pretty close next to this one. Oh, this is really intense early for a Copenhagen game. Yeah. Hera wants to finish this game fast. But Hera has had such a good boom, right? But having said that, I know we didn't like Viper's balance before. He's got the villager lead, right? His resources are still looking pretty nice. But as his castle, uh, sorry, as Hera's castle goes up, most of Viper's Chukunu go down. Siege will mean very little at this stage of the game. And Hera still has the treb lead. Such a good KD for Hera now. And remember, he lost the water early on. So on land, it's just looking really, really good for him. Double castle set up here for the Viper. Where's the third one, or does he want to save the stone for the repair? Yeah, I think you have to. I think if you drop the third one, that's just another castle you could potentially lose here. Both players are prepared to sink a thousand plus stone into repairing these positions. Viper is closer to his own eco, which means that he could, in theory, pull more villagers. Hera has a villager problem because he only brought so many. So Hera might lose his castle before Viper does. And if Hera loses both these castles, you could say goodbye to really healthy Jukunu production. Yeah, well, if, if oh, you sorry, uh, plumes. plumes. Yeah, yeah, I think <laughs> if, if Viper loses both his castles, the game is over, right? The only way how we have a long game is here is if Viper makes the defense happen, right? Now he's looking at four traps against the four traps of Hera. Masonry comes in a bit earlier. He must hold this position. Yep. And right now, there is a decision to make if you're Hera. Uh, well, actually, I don't even think it's a difficult decision at all. I was going to say you could choose to try and use your traps against Viper's traps, but when you're the offensive player here, you obviously want to go for those castles. And that's what he's doing, and Viper's using his traps against Hera's traps. He hasn't killed one yet. And Viper's castle there, I mean, that castle is, is certainly going to go down, right? Oh, we're down to four traps now. He's still repairing with everything. 400 HP, that stuff, oh yeah, likely to fall. Maybe two more kills against the traps, and then the castle might live. I mean, this is ridiculous. As Viper has clearly done the math here, folks, because that castle is still not down. Don't ask me how. It feels like if he had one or two less villagers, the castle would have fallen, but he still can't take out Hera's traps. Hera was switching targets there for a moment, tried to go for the traps. It's going for the castle at the top. Viper has to switch his repair. Yeah, and now same same deal now. We just shift on to the next castle, and Viper's villagers just move on to the next one. Like, are you kidding me? Hera's blue micro will take care of the Mangadel. 
and it, plumes are still superior to Chukunu. Oh god, what an intense timing, and that's what we see if both players heavily rely on units from their castle. Viper somehow tries to hold if this castle is going down. How is Viper producing anything? Yeah, and, and you know, right now, he still feels like he's got a slight chance here, Nilly. He's taken out some of the traps from Hera. Hera only has three now. Viper's got five or so sitting there. And the plumed archers can't be used against the traps either. Hera has to micro against the mango. But maybe Viper can do this, but he's running out of stone. Uh oh, and now he's housed. Yeah, that's tricky. He needs to buy stone ASAP. Buys 300 for himself. Wants to make sure. Hera, he loses another trap. Are you kidding me? Viper's not dead yet. Viper has a villager lead. Hera's brought more villagers, but this time to repair his castle. And I think Hera is accepting that he is not going to kill the Viper here. Viper holds on. Oh boy, and oh, is he holding on. Hera's macro slipping a bit behind us. Food and gold floating quite a bit. Could be a nice setup, though, for an eagle transition. Listen, this has not been a clean game from the Viper by his standards. It just hasn't, Nilly. But if you get the win here, if you turn it around, you forget about it, and this can be the momentum swing that we've been waiting for for the Viper. Hera, it seemed like he could have gone for mass plumed archers, switched into eagles, gone for this crazy eco play, but he's lost castles, and he's now 20 villagers behind. He does still have the relics, but Viper could push him soon. Only two archer ranges here for the Viper. Goes for the stables and all the upgrades. That's some kills on the plumed archers. Skirms are helping out quite a bit. Monks try to join the party. Viper still with five traps. The next castle there could be in danger, but Hera is preparing his traps for the defense. Yep. Now, when you switch to eagles here, you're seeing primarily archers and skirms from Viper. Can you do it now, Nilly? Or do you so. have to wait? I think so. Why? why uh, plumed archers not really adding anything right now, right? Eagle switch should be in here. I'm actually a bit surprised that it didn't come earlier. Now the first upgrade for the eagles. Okay, so if you're doing that, you need to get Eldorado, which is a unique tech. That's pretty expensive. You then need all the armor upgrades, then you need the barracks. So I think Hera's a little far removed from that. Viper, though, clearly expects it because he's getting these stable upgrades. But both players, again, five, six upgrades and the production buildings and the units away from that really being a factor. Which means that maybe Viper could feel confidence to just continue going Skirm Chukunu. It's got to be tempting. If you see Hera sitting there with that castle, yeah, you've yeah. just pushed two castles. It's got to be tempting to continue this push. Yeah. And Viper now showing the stable there at the front. Is building or added some stables further in the back. Viper uh, trying to loop around, trying to find a good angle. That is a nice defense there. The setup with the traps beforehand. Love it. Yeah. I, I wouldn't even mind like a sixth and seventh trap here, honestly. Both for both players. <laughs> this is so, <laughs> what is this, a fat slob game? <laughs> Absolute madness. They're both just unpacking their Bam! traps. This is the meta we have, and Viper gets the better of the Treb RNG. He also had more of his treps in the same spot, so he had like, what, five or six shots there going in against one. And Hera still just clicking Eagle Warrior. He hasn't even clicked Elite Eagle yet, Nilly. Oh, Feels like he's had so much time. Viper needs to take into Cavaliers. I think he's taking into Light Cav first. Maybe he doesn't feel like he has enough gold. I don't think Light Cav alone will do the job. Terra now happy to take the trade here, which is quite questionable. I don't questionable. know about happy. I don't know about happy. He's probably not happy about it. And he clicks the lead eagle now. Now there's so much gold in the middle here, and Hera's been able to get a lot of it. But if Viper can get his hands on it, then he can justify Cavalier. I just wonder if Viper right now feels like Cavalier's too expensive. But I'm with you. I think you need something more than Light Cav. And uh, Cavalier could be that option. Well, Viper is so stuffed for gold, right? Two of the gold spots are here in the middle. Relic gold, still incredibly nice for Hera here. Nightcap, it feels like the unit that he could afford, but against elite Eagle Warriors with Eldorado and the last armor upgrade, I think he could get overwhelmed here. Yeah, but, but I think if Viper can take this castle out and then just, just fall back, he could be okay, because it gives him time for Cavalier. What he can't have is to not take this castle out. Yeah. So you take the castle out, you can pack up your traps, you can move in with the light cap now. He's going to see the eagles. This gives him a moment, Nilly. We need waltz. And yeah, he needs to get out of here. This is Viper we're talking about. So quick waltz to save the traps would be massive. Some of these traps are exposed, though. 100 HP on those eagles. They will not die to a single cast of fire here. And the eagles are not diving in? What? I'm huh? surprised that he isn't committing. Interesting. This is a lot happening. I mean, Viper's going to lose all of those skirms. Hera, I think, wanted to protect his own trebs there. That could have been part of it. 
Cavaliers coming out from Viper, full armor upgrades. Viper's gold count is really low right now, Nilly. The fact that Hera's been mining all this gold in the middle is ridiculous. Viper's got that gold there, but like, his skirm's starting to disappear now. Hera's up to 21 eagles. Hera's still mixing in plumes. I'm beginning to like Hera's position more and more. Yeah, absolutely. Full Q there of the eagles. Look at that, 30 still on gold. Still the six relics he can produce for days and days. The traps trying to defend here, but the eagle number's just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and Hera says, okay, the, the biggest uh, weakness for my trebuchets is my opponent's trebuchets. So I'll just take all these out, and he's going to dive like he didn't do before, but simultaneously leave some of his trebs exposed to Viper's cap. So we might have neither player with trebuchets here shortly. Didn't we just have six versus six traps? We completely resetting this, and that means the Eagles can now dictate where they want to raid, and this will be tricky for the Viper. He only has two castles for the defense. Yeah, he's got, and he sunk so much stone into repairing, too. Right, so he's again at the limit as far as Stone's concerned. Hera's brought more treps forward. He's got one now. Viper has to dive. You have to keep that castle up. But Nilly, I'm just not seeing the numbers. Eldorado Eagles are insane. Hera's got 40 of them. Viper's just got 15 Cavalier, and he doesn't have the gold to produce these forever. This is looking amazing for Hera. Oh, God, what a brilliant position Hera put himself into here. He is not really queuing anything right now. Feels like, okay, more eagles would block my trap production. Now queue some more, maybe thinks about the raid. Viper, how is he getting to proper army? Still mixes in some light calf. It feels like he's not working towards the perfect pop 200 army. I mean, when you're behind, and Viper might not feel like he's behind because of the score, mm -hmm. but when you're behind, you sometimes want to try and raid, right? And so Viper has that opening on the right side if he chooses to do that. The problem is, if you're not showing Hera enough resistance, Hera's just going to raid you. Yeah. And if you don't have as many castles and you're up against eagles, you're bound to lose more. Viper's going to make a move, though, around the pond. He does get through there just as Hera was going to wall it up. So Viper's got one treb there. There are kings on this map. So maybe Viper will hope for a lifeline here and find a way in to kill Hera's king. But... This, it feels like Harris should just immediately react by diving with all the eagles. Viper should lose everything. You see a lot of buildings there in front of that king's tower. Mainly going for the raid here. It is some barracks. I don't really think there's a natural opening. Although, didn't Hera early on open in front of his castle? I think yeah. Cavalier could he get did. in. Eagles are diving into Viper's base right now. Eagles are diving into Viper's base. Viper is hoping that Hera opens the gate. Castle's down. Those eagles cannot be stopped right now. Viper's got a king, but it's not in his base anymore. But there's villagers in there. Viper's cavalier now. There he's got light cap, but the cavalier are looking to get in. Hera should know. And Hera's king is still in a tower in there. And Hera's got a wall behind here. Viper will not get through. Oh, that was really important. And Viper wanted to go for the king snipe, not given to him. Yeah, and Hera gets the 3 0. And, you know, back to what we said, that game was closer, right? Viper put up a little bit more fight. But in the mid game, again, it was all Hera. Viper. He picked maps that were going to give him chances in the late stages, but it has been the transitional game from him that's looked very off today. Yeah, I think we, we would need to go into like the 15 to 20 minute mark to see what happened there. Viper, he had the fish advantage, didn't really get into the village advantage. The 30C was late, floated a lot of stone, some off timing there with the farm transition. The, something as if some waypoints were wrong from the town center. It, it didn't look that smooth. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and it's it, it's one thing to talk about Viper, but then even just to talk about the top 10 and to go back to that eco for the Chinese, and you weren't expecting to see that here this week. Um, Viper now down three games. And the struggle here is, guys, when you have such high expectations for yourself, when you have such an illustrious career, you hold yourself to maybe an even higher standard than we hold him to. Mm -hmm. So he'll know this. He, he's feeling it, but can he pull himself out of it? That's the complicated thing. <sighs> this is obviously the pressure, right? You've been here for, what is it now, seven days? Uh, Something like eight? that. We started last seven? Saturday yeah, yeah, yeah. and had five days of group stage yesterday. He had an amazing set against out. Viper 3-0 down. Still some time, still some good maps for him. And if he gets back into the set, we have a lot of maps that can go either way, right? I think something like Young Anati, both players incredibly strong, can be quite aggressive. And who Viper, he needs... Uh, it just feels like the body language isn't there. It, yep. it feels so weird from an outside person to talk about someone like, oh, he is not feeling it. But we simply know... We, we, we have seen so many games from him. We know how laser-focused he can be, what how he's looking, 
how he's thinking through the draft. And we know if like the game is sucking him in. And here it just feels like I, I don't see it. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. I mean, that right there is the look of a man who is dejected. And he's frustrated with himself or wondering what has gone wrong. But it's not the Viper that we can sometimes see. Hera, you'll take what you can get. You're here for wins. Obviously. And there's been yeah, and Hera's yeah. played amazing, right? It's not Hera's fault that maybe, you know, <clears throat> we've we've brought uh Hera uh sorry, his opponent's form into question here. But we just knew, regardless of who Hera's up against, he's gonna bring a certain level. Yeah. That level has been brought here, and he's two more wins away from going to the final against Mr. Yo. 3-0 here. The Mayans game was just really, really well played. The plume aggression there. And then the forward castle. Something we very rarely see against Chinese forced. So much reaction. Forced so much focus there on all those traps. Forced a decrease on stone. The problem was Chukunus were kind of off the off the menu then. Yep. yep, and yep. Viper had to go for Cavalier. And then the Eagles just so incredibly well, in killing all the army that Chinese can put on the map, right? Typical answers to Eagles are hand cannoneers, not something we can have with the Chinese. Chinese. Yep. Champions, we don't have supplies, so you have to play the full price, and then it's tricky when it comes to cost efficiency and obviously trying to chase those down. So Chinese, they need the full world map then. Hey, live viewing people, what's up, guys? Did you save me a pizza? <laughs> I'm going to be there after this series. Uh, what you said, there's, what, 4,000 pizzas? I think we're good, right? 2,000 per day, yeah. Oh, oh, oh Doubt up. fan, all right. Like to see it. Doubt's laughing in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> Doubt appreciates that. Well, uh, a lot of people are in that room there, Nilly, and, uh, you know, it supported the event so massively. Uh, last year, we had the viewing party, and the year before, actually, uh, and, uh, you know, it's been so cool to, to conclude the day and go and meet fans who've been a big part of the growth of this community. Really looking forward to that. And uh, we're going to have Hera on our left here again. Viper on the right. We'll see if Viper can turn it around here. I think they're about to start. And we'll see what Viper chooses. Because now we're even deeper into Hera's got home maps left territory. So, mm -hmm. again, at some point, like, you've got you've to go over there to the open maps. The closed maps haven't looked good for Viper. Maybe he just goes to an open map, tries to make it messy. Who knows? Goes for the full aggression. But isn't that what Hera was waiting for this whole time? He kind of I played the maps that are more in Viper's favor, we would think, going into the set. Yep, true, but like, I don't think Hera's a bad close map player. I think he's an incredible close map player. Agreed. He's incredible everywhere, as is the Viper, right? So, yeah, maybe a slight edge to Viper on the more close maps, but when we, you don't have many left, if you have a chance at making this a series, you take it to the open maps, hope to get a win or two, and then save some of those close maps for later on, and that's what Viper's thinking here. So. This, if I'm not wrong, is a home map for Hera, mm -hmm. but after three games, Viper pretty much decides we've got to go over that direction. We've got the Franks for Hera on Rocky Forest. We've got Viper playing as the Incas. Both of these civilizations have discounted castles. That's kind of cool. Ooh. Fun fact, indeed. And it is something that maybe you want to talk about. How, how much cheaper are the Frank castles, and why are they not as cheap as they used to be in Castle Age? Well, I mean, don't don't ask me for balanced opinions here, Nilly, because <laughs> but at some point recently they did nerf the Frank uh, HP in castles. It's now or in Castle Age, sorry, the castles for Franks are now 15% cheaper. Wait, yeah, 15% cheaper in Castle Age, and then 25% cheaper in the Imperial Age. But the Incas. They have an overall discount on anything that costs stone. You'll see that there. Uh, they also have an overall discount on their military units, which is really what has shot them up in the rankings in people's minds. They're always good with their unit options because they kind of have a counter to everything, but it was that military units discount that really made them strong. A lot of people think they're top three right now on standard land maps. Yeah, and this is a standard land map and even an extremely aggressive one. Because look at the lumber camps there. There's a lot of stony area that you can't build on. Even some palisades are not an option. And therefore, melee units will always find the way to the lumber camp. And that's why we see, for example, the Franks to go for lots of scouts. Or Incas go for eagles, go for spearmen, maybe even man-at-arms. Yeah, so I'm, I've actually seen Franks go man-at-arms more on this map than any other map ever just because of the fact that yeah, yeah. you know sometimes you feel like you have to do it. Incas should be pretty flexible with that as well. But at the same time, both of these players are so good at fighting off attacks with villagers and also quick walling. So there's also reasons to maybe not want to do that. But 
Again, you cannot build on the rocky terrain, so that should open up some potential for Man at Arms. The Franks, though, known for their scouts. Now, Nilly, back to the whole stone thing, right? If you look towards the middle of the map, that is where the majority of the golden stone is. So, with cheap castles being the thought, Whoever starts to stack castles in the middle area will have a big advantage. Yeah, if we get to those castles, right? Most of the time we heavily play here on fuel age, go for so much army, maybe then some transition into castle age. Franks, in all, another advantage for them is if they go a bit to the outside, there are extra berry bushes there. And if you wanted to expand, especially against Incas that don't have the craziest mobility compared to the Franks, mm -hmm. you can simply have three, four villagers having a great life there. Yeah, you know, Hera's not really the type to do that, though. He loves his farms, right? And the Franks also have the good True. farms. So I feel like there's no right or wrong answer there for your Hera. I think if you farm, that's going to help you long term. Uh, if you take the extra berries, that's not going to be too bad for you either. But it looks like an archer opening here for Hera. And he's scouting to see what Viper's up to. And I think Viper might actually just be going Spears and Skirmishers here. We don't see Viper headed over to gold right now. Spear Skirm, something we very rarely see against Scouts. Obviously, that can put in quite some pressure. The thing is, though, if then Hera is switching into... Ooh, what is this? This is an Archer opening from Hera. Yeah, Archer opening from Hera. Ooh. Skirm opening from Viper is not going to be too bad as a counter to that, right? Ooh, hashtag mind games. And that is a very open gold spot, but... Isn't that a beautiful spot for a tower? It's kind of the only way how the opponent can attack into. And if you have a defensive tower there, those villagers are protected so Yeah, well. Hera underneath the TC here. Hera taking no prisoners. He wants to steal the sheep. He wants to steal the pigs. He wants this to be a quick 5-0. And he's going to kill all oh! hunts. And Viper, I mean, he did everything he could. He garrisoned his TC to shoot arrows. But as we've established in this tournament and many others, the TCs don't really do that much damage to the scouts. And Hera taking no prisoners leaves Viper without food. Oi, oi, oi. And now he has to go for more farming than he wanted to. And he sends villagers to the front. Could be for a weird tower, could be for aggression, or he tries to get hunt in the center. But what was that? I think we, we might need a replay on that because I think we really need to know. I think that Viper lost out on four or 500 food because of that maneuver. That much? Yeah, that yeah. much? Because I think Hera killed two of them because they were Viper's color and he hit them with the scout. And then it was two to three that died when they were getting pulled away there oh. because the TC fire does hit them like that. Oh, and now idle TC could be an option here for the Viper because simply because he doesn't have enough food. All his units, yeah, they are discounted, but all of them costing food. 11 on food won't be enough to fuel an archery range, a barracks, and a town center. Yeah, and actually the big deal here for Hera now, you recognize that that's going to mean that Viper lacks a in real injection here. And I love Hera's opening. He's going to go Archers. He's been very patient with it. And then he's going to switch right back into Scout. So he's kind of switched the order. Okay, so that's one. That's two. That's three. two. There was three. I think that's five. And then five. four or five here. Wow, right, I, yep. w I didn't believe you. Yep. You were right. Yep. Sick. Yeah, and now at this point, the Viper will have to wait for the farms to kick in. Hera has the berry income from the Franks. Also has the farms. But the, the issue with Viper's opening is it doesn't really kill you that quickly, you know? It just kind of smothers you. So let's see how patient Hera can be against this. No fletching yet. Oh, he opened the stable behind. Oh, I thought he would go for... Oh, oh that could be dead, Bill. Yep. Nice to run. Skirmish is obviously not that great when it comes to damage output. Try to block. Not necessary anymore. Villager dies. Yep, Villager dies. Viper, nice job. Really nice job here from the Viper. Listen, this series has not gone as he would have wanted. But if he could, you know, after that lame, if he can turn this around, could be the momentum swing he needs. Maybe a little bit of extra motivation for him. So I'm not sure he needs that. Viper still taking the hunt in the middle. Res collected, still pretty close here. It was an epic move from Hera, but he did also sacrifice some scout HP. And Viper's eco still looking pretty good behind this. I would love to get Fletching. Not really an option for him, though. Zero gold here after building, building one eagle. Archers, low HP. Viper, he just needs Spearman. This is a good fight for the Viper, I believe. Yeah, I think it is. I'm a little surprised that Hera's taking it. A lot of Hera's archers are weak here. But then again, as we say that, it's so close, right? And I think Hera's taking it for this reason. Oh. He recognized that he had just enough scouts to push those skirmishers away. What a brilliant move by Hera there. The micro absolutely on point does the damage against the eagles. Skirmishers couldn't really close the distance. And that eagle is getting way less value than he was hoping. Yeah, a really good micro there. Also... Scout, Archer, we've said this so many times this week, much easier to control. The Scouts are fast. The Archers do more damage against things like Spearmen or enemy Scouts or Eagles. So Hera's on maybe the ideal composition for Feudal Age for the Franks. And look at Hera. Low HP Scout now being sent to the top. 
Brilliant move there. Knows, okay, that one can't really con contribute too much in the fight, and he will find the extra berries for himself. We'll get an idea about the map for the long game, also about relic position. We're going to see a lot more Feudal Age army here, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> like, there was a lot of reason for both players to make more. This could be three Feudal building. I think this could be the second barracks or second trench, and I wouldn't be surprised if Hera even plays double stable here. Okay. I mean, I would. do you go double barracks or double range right now if you're Viper? I mean, maybe you don't. If you find this engagement, Hera's scouts are all split up from the main group. Hera's only got five archers now. Oh, let's take a look here. Tries to find some damage. Villager's still on the open there, and it just feels so rewarding for the Hera here. If he knows, okay, I can go for Feudal Age and can get those villagers, it just feels so likely that we will have heavy commitment. Wouldn't be surprised if we see like seven blacksmith upgrades in Feudal Age. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a game of my dreams after all the Boomy games so far, right? And this is the this is the type of scenario where people were saying that maybe Hera is preferred, but I think Viper could do pretty well as well. And we're going to see lots of units die here. The priority for Hera is to kill those spearmen. Honestly, it seems like kind of an evenish trade, but Hera just comes out on top. Uh oh, villagers we'll have to run Eagle now in the queue. Oh, this is tricky. Uh, we'll not even, this not even out. at all. Not even at all. Viper's military count was higher. I was waiting for the units here. And Viper, he's going to bring in the spears, but he still has to be careful about those archers. Spearmen are coming in, taking so much damage there. The archers finding so much value. Now the Eagle joins the party, but all the spearmen died. What a brilliant engagement by Hera again. Yeah, and the extra HP on the Frank Scouts are really helping against the spears, isn't it? The spears have armor, and I think Viper was expecting a little bit more from the spearmen in these attacks. And as Hera loses his archers, he'll still be happy to have pushed Viper all the way out of the middle and to still have three scouts, four scouts, even five scouts coming. Look at the military count! The, uh, Viper Eco. Seven against zero, now seven against one. He is there. Viper tries to quick wall this, but knows, okay, quick wall are not really an option. Only four scouts. Hera's trying to rest a bit. Viper, he can't really take any crazy engagements here. But, like, I think if Hera was to fuel all in, he w could win the game yep. right here, right now. No, I agree. Yeah, like if he had seven scouts, if he had forging, it might be game over. But. Neither player wanting to, to do that, usually, because they feel like they're in a good enough spot. They can use this army to still get value and then really finish the game in Castle Age. And for Hera, a lot of it is get to Castle Age and boom like a madman, right? Mm -hmm. So he might want to get the eco lead there. Viper holds. I, I think Viper's position is way worse here, so he needs to take a good fight. And it doesn't look like this is the good fight he was hoping for. He simply doesn't have what it takes to stop Hera right now. And Hera again with a beautiful trade. Look at the KD double now for Hera. And then it is impossible to get proper army. Two skirmishers trying to fight this one off, but four scouts. They're just loving their lives here. Harassing the wood eco, now going back for the skirms. Yeah, and it's, it's patience from Hera. He, he could just fight. But then he will eventually lose the units, and then Viper could move back, and he doesn't want to give Hera any control. Hera up 3-0 here against the Viper. And I wonder if it's moments like these he thinks back to a couple years back when Viper 4-0'd him in a final, then apologized. Sorry, sorry, was, sorry it was so short, T90. <laughs> <Hidden job. laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry the series was so short. He apologized, right? And now it's like a couple years later, Hera has improved. And, uh, you know, that series as well had some massive lames, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And Hera was already up 3-0, had that pretty massive lame against the Viper to start off this one. And this is just... I mean, I'm looking for positives for Viper. I'm looking for it, Nilly. I, but I, I'm just not seeing it. Maybe the strength of the Eagle Warrior. That kind of has to be it, right? But Hera, he commits to more scouts, can be upgraded into Light Calf, has all the center control for himself as well. Viper collected enough stone to build another defensive tower, but still no market. And Mezzo, they really would love to play with the market and try to balance the eco a bit. Hera's eco is perfectly balanced without a market. He's adding more scouts. He'll have the archers. So we'll still have archers out there against any spearmen. Viper did drop a tower to protect the wood line. But it feels to me like, having seen lots of Hera games and being able to expect what he's going to bring to the table because he's been so consistent, Hera, even if he doesn't kill a lot, Nilly, he will be able to drop the second, drop the third TC, and maybe boom up a bit. But Viper still has a healthy vill count. He didn't lose much. In fact, he was the only one that killed the villager. Both players actually had a lot of idle TC time uh, because of the micro. Why do we build the second tower now? I think it has to be kind of at the gold, right? Will be the main pressure point. Viper delays it for now. And from here on, it's basically full. Oh, God. He, just, tap, he just calls the GG. That's what he does. He calls the GG. Hera up 4-0. We've got a best of nine. Viper would have to win five straight.
to be seen in that final tomorrow. Incredible performance by the uh, by Hera. And that's why we said Hera's home map are just so incredibly good for him. He's just a master of those small unit groups fighting there. Doubt also really excited about the set. <laughs> People... They are a bit in disbelief in the set, I right? I think that's what it is. We hyped, yep. up, we hyped up the sets for so much. The two best players that we probably have in Age of Empires right now. But we're not getting the set delivered that we were all hoping for. Hera, just one level above right now. Yeah. And I mean, people are like, would have liked to see a little bit more fight there from the Viper. But honestly, no. he knew it was coming. No. Like his eco was, was really bad. He wouldn't have had the timings. Hera would have been all over him. He could have drugged that out. Like, if that's Mr. Yo, who's in the final, who put up some great fights earlier in the day, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe that game goes on for another 10 or 15 minutes. But still felt like Hera was going to get the job done. And 25K viewers here on Twitch and thousands elsewhere, thank you, everyone, for watching. We are hoping that we will be with you for a couple more hours here, and Viper will start mm -hmm. to mount a comeback. But, you know, the body language hasn't looked great for the Viper. The, Things haven't seemed to improve from game to game. He's clearly not there right now. Uh, I feel I feel bad for him. You know, I wouldn't want a camera in my face right now. <laughs> you know, I I think there is a time for five minutes tricky. break right now, and I think maybe someone goes in there and tells him that could be an option. We have a five minute break after game four, after game seven. Yeah, maybe trying to reset his thoughts. Maybe try to be back a bit stronger if he wanted to. Here he is. It. Let's see if he wants to take it. And yeah, I think he just said yes. Okay, so nice reminder there to, to give him that. Hera's going to take it as well. Gives us five minutes to speculate a little bit. Mm -hmm. They're going to walk by us. They will going to walk by us. Should we? Well, we, we cannot say much, right? We, we, know, <laughs> we know that this is an incredible performance by the Hera, by Hera so far. Yeah, yeah it's, been, it's been incredible. It's been clean. It's been crisp. It's been lacking on the side of the Viper, right? Yeah. What do, like, how do you think Yo's like feeling right on, now? On, on different, like, he's scared shitless. <laughs> like, uh, Yo's last, uh, he, Yo's looking up what second prize money is. <laughs> I mean, I remember last year in the semis, Yo and Hera faced, and I think Hera won 5-0 there. Yeah. It was a very fast that series. Was, that was a big problem, right? And that's why the, the timing is so screwed up right now, because last year we started earlier than today, yeah. and Hera, me planning for a four-hour best of nine, Yeah. Clapped Mr. Yo in like one and a half hours. Yeah, I mean, there's certain matchups, right? Like when I see Yo Hera, I, I feel like Hera always seems to have the edge there. Um, you know, Viper Hera, what we're talking about now, has been back and forth. Mm -hmm. That's why this series has been so hyped. We have had days where the Viper has been the dominant one or has brought it back after losing some games. Oh, puppy's looking for Viper. <laughs> <laughs> that was Viper's too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's out here now. But... Um, yeah, we've kind of seen both sides of it, which unfortunately has not been what we have seen so far. Mm -hmm. And now Viper obviously is in the weird spot, right? He has some of the greatest minds of Age of Empires around him. Not allowed to talk with them strategy right now, right? Between set start yeah. and set end, no communication allowed with others. Obviously would like to reset, but would feel unfair in the competitive sense. And that's why he's sitting there. And while well, people are nodding around him, maybe could say, okay, you got it. Maybe try to have some encouraging words for him. But right now, it just feels like Hera, he's relentless. It is, and I'm not, I'm not going to lie, it does add a, a certain level of awkwardness to it as well because he's looking at the screen that <laughs> us and we are talking about this, right? So he can hear me. I mean, he's not that far away. So, you know, as we... Oh, we're going to see the dog. I think... Hold on. Dog can hear him. Eustace oh. doesn't have the best of eyesight. Oh, he's getting so there. goes he's by... Getting there. Okay, hey, Where's the go. Viper? Where's this the is Viper? what Viper needs right now. Where's this is Viper? what Viper needs. Oh, look at the tail wag. Did you catch oh. that? The tail started to wag. Oh, it's adorable. That is here. Best highlight of the series so far for the Viper. <laughs> <sighs> okay. You are now Viper's coach. You know, okay, it didn't go too He's well. 4-0. That's, that's your coach approach? No, you said <laughs> you were now Viper's coach. And he, ah, uh, and that's I said okay. He screwed. <laughs> okay, okay. I thought that was yeah, like your advice. You are going in there. Viper. <laughs> no, 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 I wouldn't. I would, I, would, I would not tell him that. I would try and think of strategy, but I'm not quite sure I'd have the strategy mm -hmm. to help him here. But anyways, continue. My, my question would be, like, what is, the, what is the mindset? Like, how do you get yourself back into this one? I mean, you got to take it game by game, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you got to take it game by game. I would have hoped to have been able to have a conversation with my, uh, with my player after game two, maybe. Not after game four, when it's you know, down to four. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you got to take it game by game. I think... The, the thing that 
is tough sometimes is it's not losing the game, but it's how the games went, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So if you have really competitive games and you lose, you know, okay, I'm right there with him, mm -hmm. right? And I think uh, Copenhagen, when the scout goes down to the castle, that's always in the same position every single time. And then we, we had a look at that eco setup. There's clearly where it's like, okay, maybe things aren't clicking. Maybe, you know, a Red Bull needs to be snagged out of the fridge. You know, maybe something more needs to happen um, as we are backdropped now with uh, the viewing area. So, you know, that's, that's what's tricky. So, you know, I advising someone when clearly they're not out there, it's like you, you say something and they're going to be like, well, I'm just not feeling it right now. Um, I, I really think, like, we haven't had a game with, like, a standard, like, scout opening into transition mm -hmm. this whole series, yeah, yeah, which is sure. wild. Like, the draft has, has those options on Harris' side, but, like, I, I think go, like, Langanati. Um, we just played Rocky Forest. There must be – I think there's another one out there. I think you, I, go Langanati. Go aggressive. What about Canberra? And then – Oh, you want a stand, standard game? Yeah, okay, seriously, good. you want a standard game? You have to win those maps now. Yeah, yeah, So you yeah, go awesome. Langanati, and then, um, you know, take it one game at a time. And I think if you win two games, yes, it's still a crazy task, but after two games where you're back in your rhythm, mm -hmm. then it's just one game at a time. But right now, you're, you're staring at the scoreboard, and it's this big, daunting task. I think play your comfort zone. I think Viper's comfort zone is it can be feudal age attack as well. We actually, it was had, had to be like decades ago when I still was at GL, had actually mental coaching. <laughs> And we walked through situations how we can maybe if like going into a set if we are down and an advice was there to envision you winning. So and like wouldn't that be one of the greatest stories in Age of Empires? Like being down four zero against the number one in the world that is playing absolutely beastly and you take it back step by step by step. Take home map away, home map away, home map away. Okay. And then I just that wouldn't work on me. That, that wouldn't just, work on you? No, it's just okay. like way too dreamy, way too, way too preachy. Yeah. I just, that would also w wasn't working on doubt. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like I think, I mean, Yo has had an interesting approach. We'd ask him many times. Like he, he was winning and he said, Dash was like, yo, yo, you had this incredible performance. You won, you were two games away. What were you thinking? And Yo said, I tried not to think much. <laughs> I actually, and that's funny. That's hilarious. He's like, I tried to, to push the happiness down avoid my emotions uh, because he didn't want it to play games with his head, right? He didn't want to get too far ahead of himself, get too excited, whatever. I think you could take that approach. Mm -hmm. But, you know, part of that, too, is maybe that's kind of what we're seeing. He's kind of like, blah, you know? Maybe he's trying to he's trying not to, to get too down on himself. But, um, but no, I, I think you don't think big picture at all. You okay. think one game at a time, and you look at your maps, and you say, okay, where can I get this started? And I would say, like... Hippopotamus, super tricky map, you've got great sieves for. Lithuanians, Japanese, I think those are probably his top two. Go for one of those two and just go at him right now. Go at him. Save Arena, save Canberra, just get a win on the board and feel good about yourself again. Or maybe just play Portuguese, your favorite civilization, right? And just like enjoy the ride. Maybe that was missing a bit. Maybe he was like too much pressure, okay, this was an exhausting set beforehand. He obviously would have like tried to jump into it a bit later. We had a solid like 45 minutes delay there. He was ready Did Hera for get, such a long time. Did Hera get up at all, by the way? Or did he sit in I that chair know. the yeah. entire time? I he, think he Hera maybe doesn't want to change anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hera's like, like I don't want to hear what the casters are saying. I don't want to move around. I'm locked in and I'm just going to stare at my computer and wait for my opponent. And that... That's kind of... Um, Maybe he's constantly clicking, like, stop the game. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, he could be looking through some builds as well, but I think he's just trying to not change any circumstances, and he's happy where he's at. Maybe some build orders from his Discord. <laughs> I, I would doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nilly, how many... This is going to seem weird. This is not meant to be rude in any way. Oh, good. I, okay. It's, it's the f okay, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, did you play a lot of team sports growing up? Again, this was, I'm not trying to make you look like a massive this, nerd here. This is this okay. is coming from a massive nerd. Okay. I'll, I will just say yes. Okay. Okay, so did you ever have like a really important game? No. And you <laughs> Okay, well, imagine you had a really important game, okay. right? And then you like go over to the coach, and coach is pumping you up and talking about how important it is and getting, your, getting the boys ready. And you have this big thing, and you do your thing, and then you go back out into the field. Mm -hmm. Well... 
Sometimes when, like, the other team is, like, freaking standing on that field, mm -hmm. just staring at you, like, we've been ready. Ooh. Right? Ooh. That that's like a that's like a mental sign that oh crap we're in for a crazy second half right oh, yeah, yeah. And, and like that's what I kind of think about with Harris still sitting in that chair he's like I'm not yeah. going anywhere yeah I'm not going anywhere I'm ready like yeah. are you ready he has the lobby up yeah. Viper comes back he sits down he goes to his Discord the lobby code was posted five yeah. minutes ago yeah there's no the mental reset selected. yeah there's no mental reset yeah. I'm ready here right yep Harris told me he shadow boxes before games he, he will actually know what he did was he said t9 do you shadow box i was like what <laughs> he's like do you shadow box i'm like what do you mean he's like well like before a match do you like get your pump self pumped up and like shadow box you know like you're going to war i was like no i was like do you listen to rocky music and he's like what do you mean i start asking specifics i'm like how many punches are we talking about <laughs> like what are we doing are we outside where are we doing so i didn't see any shadow boxing from Hera, but apparently he does that from time to time to get in game mode yeah he came to me and asked me and hey, nearly did, did you ever when you grew up do a team sport <laughs> what did you say to that i was like why, why what are you trying to achieve <laughs> 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 Sorry, I didn't mean again. I didn't mean to to you know try and make you look a certain way. It was just I wanted to make sure you knew where I was coming from. Okay. So, did would you be the coach that like trying to wake them up, give them a, a slight clap on the cheek? On the cheek? No. Where where else? Nowhere else. I Nowhere would no, 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 no. You said like not on the cheek. No, the uh, uh, nilly. Okay. Don't try and get back at me just because you didn't play a lot of team sports, all right? <laughs> oh. Whew. All right, so what do we say? Langanati, Viper's got to turn this around. Listen, this is not what people wanted to show up and see. Very few people wanted to show up and see this. Even if you wanted one of these players to win, you wanted a competitive series. It has not been a competitive series so far. Let's see if Viper can turn it around. I think both of these civilizations are top, top tier. Viper has the Lithuanians, and then Hera has the Malians. And Nilly, talk about the start on this map. Obviously, there's that gold that you eventually need to chop through, but the middle is quite interesting. Yeah. In the middle, we have three deep fish exactly, but not with a lot of food. I think 225 per deep fish there. So typically, we're trying to dock a bit earlier because you can use that dock also to then go for the shore fish. Civilization that we have seen a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, is the Malians here because... They're not sure if they might be the best civilization on this, but it feels like they are never banned, they never have draft high draft priority, but they perform pretty well. Simply that the gold lasts 10% longer when we have so limited gold. That's pretty nice for them. Yeah, there's that on top of the fact that you save so much when you spend wood, which you're going to be doing a lot of with docks and other things. Viper here, two villagers to build his dock. Hera sees him. And we'll probably see some fishing ships from both. But for the Lithuanians, they start with extra food. And that extra food's really helpful at the start. It means you can maybe take wood earlier, and uh, it leads to a similar dock time compared to the Malians. I think where Lithuanians become very strong is in a heavy trash situation, where if they're heavy, heavily reliant on spears, mm -hmm. or if they're heavily reliant on skirms, but they also have very strong knights. The, the worry will be the Malians have camels. Mm -hmm. So if I were to think of an army comp for the Viper, he would want to have a combination of spearmen and knights. And Hera might want to go more for, like, crossbow or camels. Crossbow, obviously nice there with the gold and wood bonus. And look at the adjustments. Viper starts with more food, therefore sends another village on wood at five. Hera saves all the wood and therefore can have one less, only four on wood. Yep. There's also berries around the TC here, which you can take. It is a bit awkward because uh, you need to take a lot of those berries before you can farm around your TC. So I, I still am seeing difference in timings on that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's kind of fun to look for as you're looking at everything else. But then players have just four tiles of gold near their main base, and the rest of the gold they have to chop through. So that is something that players will normally have to think about more so towards Castle Age. You cannot TC directly on the trees surrounding that gold. And then the gold, is that gold visible all the time? Doesn't really matter that much, right? Yeah, and but it's is only it? your two gold spots. Yes, yes, it is. Okay, so Harris is as well. I didn't actually know that until he now. Sees this. Yeah, for for the placement a bit, right? Okay, so it lets you know kind of where it is, so, you, so yeah. you don't have to scout it. Okay. Yeah. But it won't really help you too much, right? Because you never get surprised. Oh, my opponent is actually on my goal. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. didn't scout it at all. Yeah. So it's pretty much a non-factor. Makes sense. So I would expect to see scouts and spears here, and then players will eventually wall in around their TC, kind of a U shape. 
Viper building up towards that. We'll see his barracks here shortly. But again, kind of said it before. I'll say it again. You have to start small. One win at a time. I think if Viper wins this, he's still not going to be feeling great. But I think if you win another game then, then there's using process of elimination. You can kind of envision what maps are remaining. If you like your Civ matchups, maybe the Civ matchups are feeling 50-50. Maybe how you win this game or the next game then starts to get in Hera's head a little bit. So there's, there's a lot of different factors as Stat Guy is scared. Because the Malians are so incredibly good on this map here. As we mentioned, so many bonuses aligning for them and mobility clearly on their side. We have just seen Mr. Yo play a phenomenal game with them. So let's, let's think like crazy talk. Okay. If Viper wins five in a row, yeah. reverse sweeps Hera here, then goes on and wins the final, where does that rank in his career accomplishments? Whew. Like emotion, probably one of the highest emotionally, right? Obviously, winning a semifinal on its own in a vacuum isn't the greatest, craziest achievement. But being down 4-0 and then coming back from the massive mental disadvantage has to be a top three emotional moment for him. Yeah. I mean, as far as emotions go as well, a lot of that has to do with how recent it is, right? So recently, yeah, 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 you win yeah, the yeah. tournament, it feels yeah. emotionally like the best one ever. And then as time goes on, we'll see. Now Hera's mining gold, oh. and Viper is not. So if this become, if the fires are going to be repaired, Viper can't do that for very long, and it looks like Viper's just going to lose his fire. Oh. So advantage to Hera here on the water here to start. And just the small fights, right? Already going in favor for Hera here. Fire galley down, barely lost any HP, and that will be water one for Hera. Still walls in another spearman there at the bottom. Oh god, that's everything is going perfectly for Hera already. Yeah, I mean Viper does still have a scout. Honestly, I don't think this is that bad for Hera because there's not a lot of food left. Can we see how much food is left on that fish there? That's 60 food. So, like, Hera's going to have two fishing ships that can't really fish there. But you are right. Good engagements here for Hera to start. Viper adding scouts. Hera not doing so. And Hera's just adding spears. Viper has six villages in the queue. Now uh, tries to cancel one. Has still five there. And yeah, not a lot of food left, but Hera... Maybe a bit later then can go on to the fish traps, increase his economy that way. Yeah, so Hera won some of those fights, but he has weak units. Viper's going to get some kills now. Very nice kills, actually. All those spearmen are going to end up going down if Viper micros it properly. Tries to take the fight against the fire galley there. I don't think that is helping him too much. What is Hera's build here? Hera's build is, is fast fire castle? ship spearmen into the market? Is this doubt? This is Fast Castle? Is that, up. is that camera at the bottom right updated? Is that the same person? I, I'm i not sure. This is crazy. Well, low change? army? Oh, man. And now he sees the market and Viper. That was some reaction here. He knows, okay, that is a bit of a weird thing. Gets a villager kill, though, and knows exactly what he's up against. Yeah, I hear Doubt laughing in the other room. So I think he appreciated that comment, but maybe not. Uh, another villager goes down, and you just got to wonder, where's the follow-up from Hera? Hera is giving Viper lots of map control right now. 500 food, very little gold there. Market can't really be used uh, unless he wants to sell all the stone. But then it gets really tricky. Spearman, scout aggression. Uh-oh, Viper. Yeah. The first time he's really getting p to put pressure on Hera. And it's like a lot of it's because of his aggression, but also just Hera hasn't produced anything at all. Hera didn't queue a spearman until five seconds ago. So he doesn't even have many spearmen on the way. And Viper's bringing more army over. Hera's going to sell all of his stones so he can't tower anymore, and he still can't quite look up to the next age. Woodland is open. This is brutal for Hera. He's got to get a, a house wall down here, surely. No, he won't. What's happening? I mean, Viper's back. Viper's back. He needed something. He gets a kill there. And it has been nonstop aggression from the Viper as he too uses the market to click up. He'll know. The only thing he's seen in Hera's base is the market. So he knows that Hera's probably up. And he's going to try and join him. But Hera still... He should be losing more villagers here on this wood line. Also took some time for Hera to click up here. Now heavily on the berries. Food transition won't be too pretty. Still not on gold. What can he produce behind this? It, I'm a little surprised Viper left the wood line there. There's one Spearman on 8 HP. Mm -hmm. I know he has you know, a lot of respect for Hera's ability to micro, but he's just simply looped back around. Maybe happy that Hera's not on the gold right now. But yeah, Maybe he feels like killing two villagers on the wood won't win him the game. But controlling the gold 100% of the time might. Okay, well, I mean, he comes back now, and Hera just walls up. So Hera's going to be completely fine on the wood line, something that he wouldn't have had time to do otherwise. Hera brings Spearman back over to the gold, so he's had the time, and maybe he's fine to be on gold. 
Harris Eco, he's going to reach Castledge. He's not going to have a lot, but I could see him possibly making a knight or two. Viper still hasn't clicked up himself, and I actually feel like because Viper didn't kill more, Harris got a shot here. Viper, uh, some idle TC, tries to get up. Gold pretty much at the front there, and Viper. That is not the easiest base to be fully walled with. Now the question, is he going for more scouts himself? Maybe some speedmen? I, maybe watch this one fully. It's just so interesting. I mean, he had so much army. He never dove in the wood, and now he's got five scouts chasing two, two scouts. scouts from Hera, right? It just feels like, you know, Viper's lacking a bit of that killer instinct at the moment. But at the same time, he feels like those scouts aren't useful over at Hera's side because Hera's got walls and Hera's got the spear. So I can understand why maybe he just pulled the scouts back. Yeah. There is no, like, real open area, right? And maybe he wants to think, okay, this likely goes into a monk defense as well. And then keeping all my scouts alive to go for light calf could be a nice addition. Now adds bloodlines. So Hera's going to open with a well, the light calf upgrade, actually. And monastery. So and light monastery. Calves would be nice. Yep. You definitely want to have Lycav out there against the Lithuanians, because the Lithuanian monks can collect relics, and the, the relics are really helpful. Hera with beautiful vision there on the HP. That's nice snipe there. Mm -hmm. And Viper's got two villagers over here in this area, which aren't walled in. Sees the left side. I, I mean, it feels like a pre-wall is the way to do it, and Viper does pre-wall. That's a little confusing for Hera, too, as well, I imagine, because players are normally building a lumber camp there with quite a few more villagers. Because if you get through with two vills, it still doesn't lead to very efficient mining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a bit of a weird approach because now you're investing in 100 wood. will take some time to get that back. Viper didn't need the walls. Not a, the biggest aggression, but Hera, very likely that he will get two relics at least. All right. Well, I prefer Viper's position right now. He makes it to Castle Age. Uh, this might not be too good for him, though. His spearmen are split up. Harry, uh, Hera, sorry, happy to take the engagement. And uh, Hera will not have the second TC yet. Viper will. You get extra food when you complete that TC as well. Nice. Uh-oh. Viper, he needs to defend his gold right now. That's not enough spearmen. Nice micro by Hera. Quick waltz by the Viper. Yeah, it just feels like the spearmen numbers were so little there. Or at least Viper didn't have them all together, but nice quick walls from Viper. Scouts will go over from Viper to Hera's side. Hera up 4-0 here. If you just got here, you're probably shocked. But that's right, 4-0 over the Viper. The games have not been close, but this one's been closer. It's a good start for Viper. Has quite some aggression early on. KD still better for Hera there after winning the water. Viper wisely walled the wa area here in the back. If there was a hole, game might be over with the Knight and two Light kept coming in. But Viper, safe for now. Yep, Viper is the second TC. Hera, no second town center yet. Viper should have a villager lead. Viper says, my turn to kill your spearmen. And sees some villagers here. Should be able to get a villager pick. Lightcap super low, maybe wants to get a hit there. Some monk on the left hand side. Viper tries to click, dives in the back, but that could be a save. Hera, is he actively watching? Yes, he is, but Viper still gets a snipe. Yeah, beautiful job there from the Viper, and Hera a little distracted maybe with his attacks that aren't doing anything at Viper's side. And nice shot from Viper, liking v Viper's position more and more here, Nilly. He might be able to get the relic in the north soon. Hera doesn't have a lot of presence there. Has the second TC, Hera still on one. So. It's just like having monks right now. Um, what does Hera do to change this? Because it feels like the faster spearmen for Lithuanians are really nice. Long term, the Lithuanians actually get halved, the Malians don't. What does Hera have to be thinking about right now? I think adding extra town centers might be an option, right? He knows he is not guaranteed to do too much damage. Viper already has the monastery at home, is really clumped up with the second town center, and Hera realizes, okay, I need to catch up in the economy, or at least not fall behind. Okay, Hera got the first relic, which was in the south. He's gonna get, most likely get, the relic on the right side there. Um, and then there's, there's only four on the map, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's north and then there's west. And Hera might send some units over there. It's actually really, easy for players with extra light cap to stop some of these relics from coming in because they could just put the light cap there and not think about it. Mm -hmm. And that's what Hera is doing now. Nice map awareness there, nice map understanding as well. And Viper, I think he will need to... Oh, look at that. Yeah, just leave it on patrol. Just leave it on patrol. You, just, you don't need to pay too close attention to it. Uh, Viper saw it, though. Viper saw it. Viper noticed it. He's backing away. He's going to send a unit over there. Oh, he tries to go for the right side, side corner, and those two light cap, typically they shouldn't achieve too much, but might still get in there. It depends if Viper thinks that Hera already has it. Oh, Viper's going to see that. That is so well played from the Viper. Beautiful job. But here, he's got to be careful, and he's even got what he needs to defend in that area. 
Oh, and Viper, now this is like three areas that went really well for him, right? Defended against the Light Calf, got the Monk Snipe. Now on the left-hand side, the Spearman will most likely clear up the Light Calf and he will get that Relic. That's Viper, sick. three nice moves within 30 seconds. Yeah, absolutely. And this is more along the lines of what you were hoping to see from the Viper today. Res collected, pretty close. Viper has the lead, though. This will go late. And TC goes up there for Viper. Now you'll make a lumber camp with those vills if you're Viper, and you'll really start to make some progress cutting through. Hera's TCs are not near the gold areas. So he has lumber camp, but he's not actually in an area where he can save his villagers if that area gets raided. I'm not sure I like that. Wow, and maybe he wants to get some stone control. We have seen how heavily Mr. Yo rushed onto stone, tried to get the cast up, tries to go for Jibeto. Maybe that is step number one for Hera to protect the gold later on. Yeah, I mean, Viper doesn't have the biggest army, right? So right now, I think he's kind of just preoccupied with making sure he brings in the relics. And so for now, Hera does have enough vision and maybe army to defend that area. But running out of gold on this map, it's not like you can just shift over to the other one. You have to be on the gold that you've planned around because you have to chop all those trees. That's a really big deal. Speaking of, of chopping wood, by the way, Viper, another game, no bow saw. Hmm. So hopefully that's something he'll notice soon. Yeah, really cost him there in the Schultz game, right? We felt like might have been a big mistake. Those knights must run away. Bit of a late reaction, but now after the last patch... <gasps> what?! I, I mean, that is extremely unlucky there for the Viper. I know Devotion is in our game now, so you can resist conversion a bit more. But Viper reacted almost immediately to run back, and Hera got those two conversions. Wow. What a massive swing. What an incredible good conversion here for Hera. He well, didn't really count on the conversions yeah. there, right? Viper was already running away, and that will be really nice for him for the defense. And now Viper needs to build more army than he wanted to. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, speaking with Hera yesterday, Hera's always been very outspoken about balance and he talked about monks a lot in 2023. And Hera said to me just yesterday, I'm really happy with monk balance right now. Well, I can understand it. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. I get it now. Okay, so, uh, oh my goodness. Well, now that gives Hera a few more knights to work with and knights moving around there from him and Viper shifted to the pikeman upgrade. Hera still in the game, still behind an eco. Viper for the fourth TC, also on a stone. So both players are thinking about those little tiles of stone. Now tries to jump forward. The monk will lose the villagers here most likely. Conversion would be absolutely crazy. Doesn't get it. One villager traded off against the monk. Viper will take that. Yep. And still that area exposed for Hera. He might be able to drop a castle soon though. Yeah. And I really like the Gebetto in the long term here. I think this tournament, for whatever reason, I've seen it more than others, mm -hmm. uh, might be a map thing or maybe the meta is shifting, but there was a recent buff to them. I think they're really good against pikes, and they're not so bad against knights either, not to mention you can mix in camels with the Malian. So Hera may choose, as he's dropping the castle now, to actually rely on the unit out of that castle. Also, the fact that they're doing melee damage means that they're way better Again, Siege compared to other units that typically do the pierce damage. And yeah, I think we might see them this much because Malians are kind of in the spot where they're not getting banned, but they often make it into the Sift Draft. Yep. Yeah, so Hera is going to notice that Viper is slowly chopping through that side. I think he notices that tree is about to be overchopped. Can we get a click on that tree? Click the tree, please. Yeah, yeah, Hera Ooh. was looking. Hera was looking, and Viper switched the tree. And in fact, if we could get a replay, I guarantee you Hera clicked the tree, checked how much wood it was, and was waiting in the distance. And also and a Viper replay realized. from Viper. Yeah, yep, I think yep, both yep. both saw that. Yep, that is really well played from both. That's the level of depth we're talking about here as Viper tries to trap these like have. That was a cool thing to catch. Castle up for the defense. It feels like we shouldn't really see too much damage happening here in Castle Age, right? Both players should make it to him quite safely. And for the first time, Viper with the villager lead going towards him. Yeah, really clicking up here. I mean, this has been a low army castle age. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this yeah, is yeah, yeah. like no one's gone over 20. We might get there in a moment, but just full boomer mode for both of these players right now. And Hera actually deleted three knights that he forgot about because he thought Viper was going to get the conversion. So lots of monk talk here in this game, but it is three relics for the Viper, which is not easy to do because he had to get that one in the corner. Where is Viper building his castle? This one feels like a very reasonable hill. It could also be a bit more defensively. Okay, he I, goes for this one, protects the gold quite nicely. I gotta say, I do not like how Viper has not really chopped through to the gold areas with certainty here. There he's got some gold, but it's awkward. Mm -hmm. Here we're gonna see a fight, and Viper's gonna drop a castle near his gold area. 
Hera doesn't get the monk kills he would have wanted. Beautiful play from the Viper, but, you know, we'll see it in a second. But he hasn't even fully chopped through to the other gold yet. Okay, let's take a look here. Oh, yeah. See what I mean? Like, you need to have more villagers chopping through, right? Hera on the other side, next to his castle as he runs through with Gebetos, is in a much better spot as far as that's yeah. concerned. Great catch. And the gold is now running out. Viper exactly. won't get any gold. Exactly. And oh. he had the setup. But I think, you know, it's it's a bit abnormal, this map. And there's a lot of other things to think about here. And Viper hasn't noticed these Gabetto in the back. Oh my goodness, these Gabetto are killing everything. Hera, if you're if you're fighting right now in other areas, just keep Viper thinking there. <laughs> just oh, keep Viper looking there, because... The wood is open. No quick walls. I think the Gabetto are in. Tries to go for the wood line. Oh, disaster! But even if you place the houses, they're still going to die to the Gabetto. And three Gabetto were getting so much value. It was looking so good for Viper, but Hera's turned it around. 11 kills. Oh, God. Oh, this houses. is so brutal for Viper. The oh. idle time nearly. The fact he's not on gold. Yeah, that makes me really mad as well, Tristan. He, like, how is he not heavily focusing on that wood area there? It's just such an, a big element of this map. Yeah, and the answer is, and here's the, okay, so here's the tree moment. We got to appreciate this. Okay, so he looks. Six he tree. checks the tree. He what? checked the tree. Goes around. Okay, so then he sits. And he waits, and, well, we got to get back to the game here. But, folks, we just wanted to double-check Hera click the tree, okay? Yeah, and was so, waiting for it. Hashtag click the tree. Hashtag NAC5. <laughs> Let's see it. Viper desperately chopping those trees now mm. on the right side. And uh, he doesn't have gold income. Yeah. So, I th clearly, he realized, which is good. And the positive for him is Hera hasn't gone for the kill just yet, so he might have time. Yeah, what is he going for? Is it, like, Halberdier hand cannon here? Feels like a reasonable army composition against Malians. No? I agree. I agree. I think the, the downside there is lack of mobility. Yeah. And when you're up against Hera, Hera's going to want to just freely raid you with the Malian Lightcalf. Oh, yeah. But Hera's pretty late with some upgrades here. He's just now getting Feudal Age upgrades. So we have to be critical of him there, too. But even though some of these games have been relatively like dominant, this is still a long day for these guys, right? And uh, you know they could play into some of these upgrades being delayed. Yeah, military upgrades, I can see why we delayed them, right? We didn't go for that much army in Castle Age, so it makes a lot of sense. Yep. Eco upgrades, certainly something that would have paid off. Yeah, and Hera just running right through again. It's like the middle of Viper's base, the most obvious place and area that's been so awkward for him. Hera also not with a lot on gold, and Hera is chopping wood on the right side, so he too isn't fully saturating his gold pile. And Viper did try and raid there. Oh, okay. Wouldn't be surprised if Tigui comes in pretty soon, that the town centers are shooting on their own. Actually, funnily enough, both civilizations with the town center. Yep, Hill Good Forts effects. gives the TCs extra range. Uh, and then Tigui, the, you just you have the arrows firing all the time. I just do not like Viper's base setup here. It feels like Hera is going to freely raid him nonstop if he doesn't deal with this. He does have pikes. He is also raiding Hera as well, though. So both players taking some pretty awkward losses at home. Yeah, and Viper's second castle there is kind of interesting, right? Really wants to fortify this area. Allows more raids to come in. He has endless amount of stone, though. He, Where is he building the third castle like now? Like, he wants to go for a Bombard Cannon push, but he doesn't have gold. He sold 500 stone to get gold for Bombard ah, Cannon. That's the castle. I, I only looked at the stone and saw, okay, a massive drop in stone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he's not building a castle, Nilly. He just simply sold the stone because he has no gold income. Hera has gold income. Viper has not chopped through yet. And Hera does have some siege. He's, he's actually going after the siege workshops there from the Viper, and he's got enough to maybe defend those trebs. I love what Hera's done. He's, he recognizes that the base is open for Viper and just continues to go for the raids. Schultz here. Kind of the map where we felt Bombard Cannons could have held something against the traps. Hera got some nice, nice snipes in. Let's take a look if this might be repeated. As we mentioned earlier, those Gebettos incredibly good against Bombard Cannons if Hera wanted to die. I don't know. Like, Viper's got 16 pikes. He's got eight latest, and he's got two cannons. He doesn't have any military units in queue. He's reacting so heavily. Hera's finding so many raids. Hera still doesn't even have full upgrades on his units, but Hera is making units, and this is a game of war. This is a battle here, and Viper just doesn't have a lot of offensive pressure right now. Finally, the defensive castle that we wanted to see a bit earlier. Bombard cannons there against the Gebettos. Gebettos, nice damage output, but obviously not the highest HP. Lightcap are trying to dive. Can we see some save? Viper jumped into the castle with his villagers. Nice save. Very nice save. Now, Hera's going to get Farimba, so this gets all the more complicated against the Cav Raids because it's going to add plus 5 attack, which means the Lycav, which have a base of 7 attack, will have plus 7. Viper will lose one of his two Bomber Cannons. And remember, he had to sell stone to get the gold for that, which really hurts him. And oh, man, is he scrambling right now. Uh-oh, and that's a big raid. The 
place where Viper had most of its villagers still wants to chop through there. Now the conversions are coming in as well. Bombard Cannon still the absolute hero unit here. Do we see the conversion? Yes, we do. And Bombard Cannon! Oh, oh, Viper keeps it alive and that keeps Viper in the game. But Nilly Gold is such a big problem. It's not a problem for Hera. He's booming behind this and Hera, who's 4-0 up against the Viper, is moments away from the 5-0 sweep. I don't know what you do now if you're Viper. Like, you've no gold. I don't know what you're supposed to do here. The Bomber Cannons are down, and Hera's happy to dive underneath this because he can produce more units. He is on gold here, has full control over the left hand side, but the Viper was way la too late there. One of the castles falls, he still has a second one. Trap still shooting away, but they already lost quite some HP. Yeah, and remember, he sold stone. So he is less stone to build more castles. This will be a compounding issue for him. He will not have castles to defend from raids. Hera is completely fine there. The composition Hera has is shredding the Trebs. Viper has no siege, and he's down to 140 pop. Hera, I think right after you take that castle, it's just another group of Lycav go out to raid. Viper's not doing anything to you, right? Classic Hera expanding to the farms, but I wouldn't be surprised to see another 20, 30 Lycav, or maybe like 10, 15 Lycav, go off to Viper's eco right now. Yeah, not impossible. No, it's okay. This is now tough to kill your castle there. Viper feels like, okay, maybe I can put on some pressure. Tries to go for the counter attack himself. And now Tigo is coming in. The town centers will constantly fire some arrows. Yep, uh, now that TC is not up yet, so that's going to be a problem. But yeah, the Gabetto could do a decent enough job to chase this down, and there's that wave. There's the wave we expected. Well, not that wave. A little further up, the wave has made it further into Viper's Eco. Lots to look at right now for both. But the like have her finding kills in Viper's Eco behind this. These Latus are not finding the damage. And, uh, well, actually, Latus are pretty strong here. But I don't think it's enough, and I've just watched Viper lose more villagers in his eco on the minimap. Look at how many farms have been abandoned. He's just, he can't defend that area right now. Still no ballistics on his castles as well, right? So that defense won't be too great. And that's another Bombard Cannon that could get sniped. And it is constantly gold units, the most expensive unit in the game. And Terra just sends in unit that only costs food with 60 farmers. Yeah, yesterday when Viper beat Doubt in the crazy series of 143, he was very honest with Dasher Interviewer. And he said, I did not feel feel like I brought my best. I'm going to have to step it up. This series has been a constant struggle for him too. Hera's been so consistent. And, and this has been the closest game. This has been the closest game. So if Viper could maybe win this, maybe he could start something. But it just feels like Hera has all the momentum right now. How is Hera doing it? Remember how his opening was, right? He played a Fire Galley into four Spearmen into Fast Castle. Yeah. Open defense here. And still the Viper couldn't punish him enough. What a crazy guy Hera is. I also think Hera has not hesitated when there's when there's blood in the water. He has gone for it, right? And we, we maybe questioned some opportunities from Viper he didn't take. But you're absolutely right, man. I mean, he, he, Hera is playing incredible right now. Viper has no castles. I expect Hera to just feast with raids. Oh, we still have one back in the base, right? That's the only uh, kind of true, saving true. grace here. But now we only have the upgrade here for Ballistics of the Castle can only now really contribute. We wanted to see Harper, Deer, Hand Cannons. Right now we see neither. Only Pikeman and Castle Age Lightus. Yep. Yeah, Castle Age Lightus, like you said. So not elite. Viper tries to dive. The army count's pretty high for Viper right now. He'll go for the traps. He's lost so many of his own. So he'd love to return the favor here. He's going to get one. He's going to get two. And Hera survives with one. But look at Hera's food eco. 79 on food. Absolute madness. With with Malians? <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the light cap numbers are going to be insane. Yeah, well, he has. Look at the queue. Seven in the queue, 24 on the map already. And that is a nice silk that Viper once held for himself. And now Hera wants to fortify that area. Is flirting with pop limit here. Gebetto and Lightcap on a hill. Viper, that will be a tough fight for him. And this is the gold, right? The gold that Viper needs so badly. I mean, we haven't really seen his gold units accomplishing as much as he would like. He'll, he'll go in there for the Treb. Hera starts to repair it. Halps don't do much against Siege at all. And the Treb actually stays alive for now. And Viper's pop is down to 130. The Treb might actually still survive here, and it does. And Lightcap are into the eco. And surely this is it now. A 5-0 for Hera. And I think we have the GG. We have the GG. Viper's headphones are off. The GG's called. And Hera will go to the finals against Yo tomorrow. What an incredible performance. And Yo has to be sh incredibly scared. Hera in this form? How can you stop this man? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean... I'd be interested to hear Harris' thoughts when you interview him, Nilly. We got the live crowd there who got to witness that.